What's going on? I am Nando. And I'm DJ. And I'm Diggins, dog. And this is Mostly Nitpicking, a podcast where every week we pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. Oh, yes. Fabulous. Excellent show, darling. London this. calling in the London <laughs> calling to London calling to London. This week we're talking about a movie that is, um, that's all those two things together. Bad English it's accent and music London. from music uh, from London, yeah, from the eighties and nineties of today, uh, but mostly the sixties. Uh, we're talking about Disney Plus's Cruella. Uh, yeah, Whoa. really gonna be a yeah, wild and, ride. And the theaters, uh, Nando. Yeah, that's true. Um, the Sun- theater also has Cruella, Sim- a, pl- Sim- a place for I saw it. Oh, very good, DJ. You, you had a yeah. theater experience. Was this your first one? Since, yeah, Ever? the last movie I saw in theaters <laughs> was Onward. Oh, what did you think? Another mediocre Disney property? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we'll get to that. Yeah, I, uh, I think it, one of those things is clearly better than the <laughs> other one, but I won't say which is which yet. Uh, <laughs> what'd you, well, okay, what did you think of the theater experience, DJ? How was that? Uh, you know what? It, it it was just as I remembered it, which is to say, mediocre. Um, some people couldn't get off their fucking phones. There was the talking. I will say it wasn't that bad. Like, and 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 granted, I was I was in a um. There was like no one there. There was like five other couples in the theater. Uh, so it could have been way worse. But uh, I'm like, yeah, this is it. But I will say, I will say, I did miss it. I I, I do think there is something to the movie theater experience that. Uh, is helpful despite my lack to find a you know good movie you know theater quality. Um, the experience is is good. So yeah. Well, Did- well, well. How the turntables? I don't yeah. know if this turn is tabled. I, I I'm still a little you know like lukewarm on the idea that theaters are the way to go. But you know they have their merit. I mean, I'm with DJ. I love the experience when it like I. There's a lot about it that I like. Obviously, but it's the bad experiences that are not every single time, but frequent enough that I hate them. Um, well, if you would just take the witch's ancestor up to the tallest hill in town and feed them some water, then you would be free of her curse and you wouldn't have to worry about those experiences anymore. An incredible amount of work. Well, um, there's going to be a line because we saw <laughs> someone tweeted us a letterbox review. Um Andre uh, on on Twitter retweeted it with uh with that and picking pod the curse is real. Um it's a letterbox review for Cruella. Uh not sure if you guys saw it, but I want to read it because it's pretty good. Um Okay. Here we go. There's a letterbox review, three stars, by the way, for Cruella. I'm assuming out of five. Uh here we go. Five ladies walked into the showing late and spent a few minutes continually changing their seats and whispering loudly to each other. They finally got settled in, and then this kid started making noise. One of the women got up, walked over to the kid, and told him to, quote, please shut the fuck up. The kid's mom yelled at her and called her a, quote, white trash bitch, and she yelled back and called her fat, and a major shouting match broke up. They walked out and continued fighting right outside, and at this point, half the audience had gotten up to watch them instead of the movie. I was sitting all the way in the back, so I was able to do both. And then I heard the sound of a taser. The mom tased the other lady (laughs) twice. The mom stormed back into the theater, grabbed her child. She was still holding the taser and rushed out so fast. About a minute later, the movie paused, and soon after, the cops showed up. They listened to all of our accounts, and then the theater manager offered us refunds or to just go into the next showing. The movie was all right, but the experience was unforgettable. Living in NYC is so fun. That's crazy. So there, actually. Dude, yeah, that's pretty cool. Why did you write cool. this review? Like, I, I, I'm wondering why you chose to write this kind of review. Oh, uh, if only I did not see this movie in a movie theater. I simply did not have the wherewithal to do that. Mm. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. Um, that but, that's crazy. By the way, that's a crazy story. So yeah, sh- this uh, this person has to. This person really needs to get the witch, and then maybe we'll get it after them. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I will say, um, and I, I would not like to defend um, the, the any of the actions of the people because they sound like monsters. It, it did begin with the the people in question were late, 
And I will say, and you know, I don't know what the this guy's experience was, but um, I went, Michelle and I went, and now typically the trailers at AMC, at least by us, are like on the low end, twenty minutes. You know, we we, we have had like half hour previews sometimes, and um, so we got to the in the theater at like uh, ten minutes after the showtime we're like we're fine we probably got 15 minutes till this thing starts and i think the movie must have started exactly at the showtime um because it was already like uh, not well into the movie but you know it, into the movie she's like still a kid um so yeah th- don't do that you can't just do a switcheroo on me like that uh amc what the fuck so maybe that's why this lady was late so this is just to say that sometimes it's the movie theater's fault and not the patrons that's a good point thank you but I also, it's I've... probably the patrons. Let's let's be real. Yeah, I mean, but... DJ, in this in this uh, formulation, you still showed up after the, it said the movie was going to start. Mm, but prior to then, it was never the case. Like they changed the rules, so like overnight they changed. That's like that's not cool. So you know, don't do that to people. So yeah. maybe people should just tase other people it, because movie theaters are bad. <laughs> You Over the course of this fellas? podcast, it's going I mean, to listen, we don't know what happened. DJ, DJ to the was the mom in this story. <laughs> yeah, DJ puts on like a wig and dresses like a uh, like like a, like a like a mom and tases people in theater. Starts a fight to get tasings well, going. If I've learned anything, it's that if you put on a wig, apparently no one can ever recognize you. Mm-hmm. That's, That's a great true. point. That's super true. Uh. <laughs> We'll, it's too we'll, powerful. We'll talk about that. One other thing before we get going, I want to talk real quick about Fast and Furious, which oh, I guess yeah, we we'll talk about more in the future because the new one's coming out soon. But uh, you guys saw the article that maybe they'll fight dinosaurs next or something. That's pretty yes. good. Yes, it's exciting. I Who's didn't faster, see that. the rock or a dinosaur? Oh, That's gee. well, play. it depends on the dinosaur. There's so many dinosaurs. A great question. That's true. Birds are technically dinosaurs, right? That's true. Have they ever raced birds? What if they race the Avatar so. people that ride the birds? Oh, that would be cool. And then, oh, but they couldn't make a Disney ride about it. That's the only unfortunate. Thing. Yeah, and they couldn't put their ponytails because none of them have hair. So yeah. they'd have to like they couldn't ride the birds ever. That's the only reason they haven't done that. That's because Vin Diesel refuses to grow hair or wear a wig. He's a principled man. But Diggins for it, we one of the things that came out was that Universal had thought about potentially crossing over the Fast and Furious with a bunch of their properties, one of which was on the list was uh, Jurassic World. Oh, wait, I did see this. I did see this. Uh, So I don't know how this works, uh, because they kind of already did the thing where Chris Pratt rides a motorcycle next to the Raptors, but I'm guessing we have to use a dinosaur as a ramp, and the Rock needs to, or Vin Diesel needs to ride a T-Rex. That's about it. He... He Sounds rode a fun. motorcycle next to the Raptors, and the Raptors were his family. That's so, true. Oh my goodness, that's right. I don't, I don't know what Fast and Furious could possibly add. Um, what if they got? I mean, this isn't the same, but Flintstones have dinosaurs. What if they had Flintstones cars that they had to power with their bare feet? That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know which dinosaur do you think would be the biggest challenge for a Fast and Furious character to deal with. So it's not a T Rex because they could handle like things that are way bigger than them, right? They've dealt like tanks yeah. and subs and all that crap. So it's not that. Um, is it? I'm trying to think like what their weaknesses are, and like what dinosaur constitutes their weakness. Is there like a dinosaur that like spits acid? Like that that would probably be a huge problem. Yeah, the one that kills Newman in Jurassic Park 1. That one. There's no way. They would get fucked so bad. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, I think it's that one. So that's pretty good. Or or, or a Megalodon. If, if we're allowed oh. to call that a dinosaur. There's no way they'd go up against a Megalodon. I don't oh, see man. why we can't call it a dinosaur. <laughs> Is it time to cross over with the Meg? Is it going to turn out yes! that the main character of the Meg was really... Uh, oh, God, why can't I think of his name? Deckard Shaw? <laughs> yeah, d- Deckard yeah, Shaw. Shaw the whole time? Yeah, it may have That'd been. Be pretty cool. That's why, um, that's why some of the other characters from Meg aren't in Fast and Furious. Like, oh? like uh, who dies in Meg? Um, like, Rain Wilson's character. The tech billionaire, bro. Oh, yeah! That's why he's never been in Fast and Furious is because he died in the prequel. What we'll learn is the prequel, like, once they decided is 
the Meg One, but then the Meg Two will come after Fast Five or Fast, whatever we're in Fast Nine. Full nine. nine, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, one other thing I wanted to get to before uh, Cruella. Um, d- d- Thor's really strong now. He's humongous. Yeah, he's so big. He could he could kill any of us if he wanted to. You know I mean, that was always true. The the whole time. That's a good point. Even when he was doing that movie where he was getting a whale and he got really thin. Remember that? I I still think he could take. I'll speak for myself. He could take me out like no problem. I don't think yeah. that there's a human on Earth I could beat in a fight, so... <laughs> yeah, there is. Uh, Jared Kushner. Mm. You would mm. fuck up Jared Kushner. What about that other Jared? Close. You'd probably get him, too. Oh, you know? yeah, you'd destroy him. You get power well, over oh, all the Jareds. Uh, Joe Exotic, he's got, like, prostate cancer in prison. You you would destroy him. Also, well, he has a DJ, fear of All they tigers? have to do all day in prison is work out. I would be destroyed by but he, him. But he can't. He's, like, gaunt as fuck, apparently. That's true. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? I mean, I think there's a certain ex-president that is one, like... He, that that for the rest, like for his whole life, and this probably actually applies to a couple of them, except for Jimmy Carter. He's cool, not not applicable, and obviously not Barry O because he's like you know fit. But uh, there's plenty of ex presidents that are like in Mortal Kombat finisher mode, where they're just like bobbing yeah. their head around and sitting. Um, so I think you could probably get one of them. Yeah, not saying easily. you should. That would be against the law. But if if you know if they came for you, I think you could defend yourself. Yeah, agreed. Super agreed. Um, but yeah, the what's his name is really strong. Uh, because apparently he's playing Hulk Hogan in a movie. Did you guys know that? Oh, I did not. That's yeah. oh, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I'm sure it'll be a licensed biography, so it'll be super positive on Hulk yeah. Hogan. I was gonna yeah. say, is it a movie about him screaming the n word constantly? That would be so funny if it was, and that was the whole movie. And it was just like the whole. First of all, it first it was the sex tape with Bubba the Love Sponge's wife. Like in graphic detail, and then it was this conversation he had with I think Brooke Hogan, I guess, about whether yeah. she should date uh, African Americans or not. And um, he mean his yeah. daughter, whom he is not at all weird about. Oh, oh is he God. weird about her? I didn't know, yeah. but that makes sense. Um, so that's fun. That not that, but the part that Thor is strong. <laughs> So, some of that other stuff we were talking about. Yeah, Taika Ta- Ta- put out a picture where he was like, look how strong Thor is. Also, I'm in the picture as Korg in like a, a Hawaiian shirt or some shit, probably. That is I nowhere near the most suit. interesting picture featuring Taika Waititi <laughs> that came out recently. It's true. It's true. Well, explain that to people, because I honestly, I feel like I've seen it once and I went, I think I get it. I don't need to see this. You think ha- you do. Have these high standards for my life that I can't. You know, I mean, you know, you never know. I'm sure Taiko Atiti didn't think he'd be in that picture a year ago. But what's this picture? Well, so first of all, apparently it only recently came out that he's dating Rita Ora, the singer. From Fast uh, and Furious 5? Fast and Furious 6, you mean? Oh, yeah, you're right, 6, sorry. Uh, when yes. he says that nonsense line that you couldn't figure, we still couldn't figure out what it means. Yeah. I still don't know what that means, but yes, that one. Apparently they've been dating for a while, because apparently he's also been divorced for a while. All of this is new information. Yeah. Cool, Stars, um, they're just like us. Yeah. Rita, <laughs> Rita Ora, I think, also used to date actress Tessa Thompson, uh, who is Valkyrie in the Thor movies. And apparent, but apparently everything's all cool between all of them, because there's some pictures where basically the three of them are all like making out together. Pretty good. And you know what? Good for every one of them. Yeah, they're all consenting adults. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it uh, doesn't mess up the movie in any way. Every every individual person in there is lucky. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, do you guys think there's going to be a scene where Natalie Portman is relieved of her duties and Valkyrie is the new Thor, actually? And then Rita Ora comes in as Thor 2, and they That'd take over as Thor. And then also Thor is fired, and Korg is Thor now. That'd be pretty fun. <laughs> Everyone's different. <laughs> yeah. Just we got two, we got two new Thors that are women, and and the old Thor is also he's busy lifting weights. So now the Rock Man has to be Thor. I mean, listen, if 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 Valkyrie wasn't so like, I think people want the first like LGBTQ plus Marvel character so badly that any time any character seems like they might be that, we're all like, yeah, that one, make that one it. Um, yeah, that's true. And like, there's some characters in the comics that have 
you know, some some characters are very explicitly that, but then there's other ones where it's like, oh, we don't really know what that one's up to. Um, and especially Wait. this Valkyrie, who, like, isn't really, like, a comic character in any really explicit way. She's kind of an invention for the movie. Wait, Nando, are you suggesting that the next Disney movie might feature the first ever openly LGBTQ Disney character ever? <laughs> So I was no, wondering about Cruella. that. Who was it in Cruella? The the guy, right? Yeah, the How do we know? Man. Who who I, says? Listen, guys, <laughs> guys. Uh, every single Disney movie from now until the end of time is going to have the first ever openly LGBTQ Disney character, and you know that you just true. gotta you just have to accept that. That is true. Yeah. Who do you think it's gonna be in uh, Black Widow? It's gonna be the, uh, her the sister. I think it's gonna be David Harbor. That'd be fun, right? Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, maybe Taskmaster uh, will secretly turn out to be somebody else, and they'll be like, "By the way, as I'm falling off this cliff to my death, probably I liked a lot of different people all the time." Uh, you yeah. know what? Actually, we're gender thinking way is too fluid. Big. We're thinking way too big. There's gonna be like some Russian mobster she shoots halfway through the movie, and like. As he's bleeding out, he's like, <laughs> Sergey, I love you. Yeah, that's probably it. Uh, yeah, that'll be fun. I don't know. Who do you think? I feel like if anybody, the most the most explicitly LGBTQ plus character that's actually shown up in any of the movies is probably Loki. I want to say Loki's been all like he's done a lot of stuff over the past. I mean, I don't know exactly how it plays out, but he's also been there's been like. A girl Loki, and I, I feel like he could Listen, be if they Loki's decided a, it. Loki is a horse's mom, so I mean, there's a lot going on there. Wow, that's true. And that horse, Sleipner. I was gonna say the name of a fun famous horse. What did you say? <laughs> Sleipner, the real name. Sorry, oh, okay. I'm being boring. I, I was gonna say silly horse, but I couldn't think of any spirit stallion of the Cimarron. Yeah, Seabiscuit. <laughs> but I, I guess this was all to say. I think if they weren't it seems like i have a feeling valkyrie will probably be the first out character in a marvel movie that isn't a background extra holding someone else's hand and if that wasn't the case i think her and Korg would probably be a good couple i kind of like that honestly you know they got fun energies together i like it i don't ship yeah. things i'm not a shipper but i'll i'll co-sign that relationship uh and this is the, this is it everyone the 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 first step on the slippery slope. Look for Nando's first AO3 fic in just a few <laughs> weeks. Well, we never <laughs> saw the old because it seems like they made they would made Valkyrie like it was like oh she kind of had a girlfriend maybe and it was that blonde Valkyrie that died in the Hella flashback in Ragnarok that is what the what Valkyrie traditionally looks like uh, like just a blonde white girl and uh, maybe that was Rita Ora the whole time maybe we didn't know. And then maybe she gets brought back to life or something. I don't know. They'll figure something cool out. Or not. Or it'll be, yeah, it'll probably be some guy holding hands with some other guy. That's fine. I don't know. It's great. It's all great. I honestly forgot that was in this one. I kind of was expecting like a Last Jedi style, just two characters kissing at the end. But it's like, or not Last Jedi. Rise of Skywalker Rise of style. Skywalker. Yeah, two characters kissing oh, yeah. at the end. And it's like, I guess, oh, yeah. that's, I guess that's it. But... We didn't even get that, did we? No. There's nothing like that. Yeah. Maybe they didn't want to be so, like, ham-fisted about it. But, like, I feel like you gotta be a little ham-fisted. Because I don't think they're ham-fisted. Where would you even learn this information about whatever the fuck that one's name is? Well, I, through, I think you just Through know. viciously stereotyping him. You yeah, look, you honestly. Look at him and you're true. like, like well, true. I mean, obviously. Come on, guys. Unless... If there was, like, a, a spin-off comic or, like, a visual novel or something that maybe explained it, then I guess... But it's, like... if it, So if it was, like, a Marvel thing, I'd be like, oh, okay, there's, like, something else in the video game. He, But in this, it's, like, that guy is just some guy. Could be any of them. Could be any of them. Because this is a very... For a movie made by Disney, very little romance. Nearly zero. That is true. There's, like, you know? no love interest. I was waiting for the, uh... That one of the guys to be like, Estella, I love you so much. Me too. It feels like I love maybe, you, Estella. Towards the end, it feels like maybe they that that existed in an earlier draft of the script. Because mm. there's a scene where I'm like, are they are they doing a yeah. scene here? But they never is quite that the, commit to it. Is that the balcony scene? Yeah. 
Yeah, I had the same confusion there, but because so much other bullshit happened by the end of the movie, I'd forgotten about it. But now that you're mentioning, I'm like, oh yeah, maybe. Uh, but guys, we have to talk about 2021's Disney Plus's Cruella. It's yeah. a movie. It stars Emma Stone as a British wig maker. Uh, <laughs> the famous what? What's this character's name even? Estella. So like it's Solo. Uh, I, th- I don't think so. It is never actually said on screen, as far as I know. But I believe her original birth name is Estella Miller. Okay, wow. there you go. So what we got boring name. We got Emma Stone as Estella. Oh, it gets uh, trust me, she'll she'll find a way to spice that name up. Because uh, we got Emma Stone as Estella Miller. We have Emma Thompson, the other Emma. We got both Hollywood Emmas here as the Baroness. All, all British women are named Emma. I'm pretty sure. I mean, at at least one of them is. (laughs) Some American women are named Emma, too. Uh, Because then we also have, uh, besides the two Emmas, we've got a bunch of other guys. Who cares? Um, There's honestly, though, lots and lots. Mark Strong's in there. He's a star. What a star. Yep. Uh, As John. I don't know. He didn't sing a single bar of Country Roads in this movie. He can in every movie, Diggins. That's not the rules. (laughs) I mean, that would have fit right in here. Yeah, that would not have (laughs) fit. I mean, that's true. (laughs) The soundtrack of this fucking movie. Oh, my God. Hey, they ran out of budget. I don't know. How did they not do London Calling, though? Seriously, it's insane. Well, they, they, they filled up all of their on the nose quota when they put in Sympathy for the Devil. (laughs) <laughs> well wait when did when did the movie take place because i think it would have london calling came out in uh the 80s i want to say i uh, looked it up uh, uh, 79 so, okay but not all the music was period was it yeah i think so most of it theory, was as far as i can tell it is in theory the 70s but also like it's every decade of the past seven, seven yeah. years it's true that's true uh this movie is so like i said it's called cruella it is directed by Craig Gillespie, an actual director for movies, you guys. I'm going to throw yeah. you out some <laughs> movies, and you'll be like, wow, what a movie. Uh-huh. He directed a movie called Mr. This is 2007 movie called Mr. Woodcock, which was like right. about oh, a stepdad who is Billy um, Bob Thornton. Oh, uh, what a I say Sean William okay Scott movie. is the kid. Yeah, it seemed like it could it? be fun. <laughs> nah, but I, I feel like it had its it, dumb name, so I probably wouldn't have cared, but it might be good. It'd be good for us to nitpick. It's a very nitpickable movie. Oh, okay. It's so stupid. Well, he also so directed Lars and the Real Girl, which is supposed to be a good movie. Oh, I haven't seen. yeah, I've heard good things about that. Uh, he directed a movie called Fright Night, which was some sort of oh. horror or something. Was it the yeah, remake, remake of an older actually. one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Anton Yelkin, David Tennant, Colin Farrell, Tony Collette, Imogen Poots, my favorite actress. Oh, my God. I love that. Imogen Poots. <laughs> the gall to use that as your real name uh <laughs> oh not change God. your name to something something less bootsy but I, I love it i respect the shit ever um also directed million dollar arm remember that movie where it's oh like, what that's if jennifer garner was a baseball movie. player or something yeah oh my god that movie is trash but is but, that like but. golden arm? No, it's <laughs> much worse. Yes, she she also bankrupts her dad, but it's for it's for baseball, not for <laughs> not for vanity. But she does it's it ends the same way. She gets buried with her million dollar arm, and uh, and everyone in the small town is sad. Uh, also, the finest hours, which was that movie. That one, remember when Mark Wahlberg used to do movies about real life disasters? <laughs> Pretty sure this was one of them. Uh, this was the Deepwater Horizon one, maybe. Oh, no. This was a Coast Guard something. Oh, maybe this is a Mark Wahlberg. Oh, this was Chris Pine. Never mind. Um, uh, this one doesn't matter. Because the real one, uh, this was directed by the director of I, Tanya. Oh, my yes. God, really? Yeah, did you guys know that? This is, this is uh, it's Craig Gillespie for you. Yeah, I actually did know that. Do you guys know what else he is directing that is on the way? That uh, hell no. Nah. He's Benign. directing the... Oh God! I, I, oof, oof, I don't. I don't. I hope not. He's directing Pam and Tommy, the uh, what is that? Pamela Anderson Tommy Lee movie with uh, oh, Lily, yeah. whatever her name is, and uh, the Winter Soldier, and they look pretty close oh. to the what the other ones look like, and it might be fun. Um, so anyway, it's directed by those people. Great stuff. It's written by like seven guys. Uh, no, uh, s- five people plus someone that wrote the original movie who's probably long dead. So. A lot of people. It's not worth it, but 
A lot of them seem to write romantic comedies. Shocking, shocking stuff. Um, that's not true at all. Wow, okay. We got somebody that wrote, like, that movie where, um, what the heck was that one called? Uh, da, 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 da. Like, what happens in Vegas? And isn't it romantic? And couples retreat. And they got another person. To- so that's Dana Fox. Tony McNamara wrote The Great and The Favorite. Uh, so I like the favorite. Yeah, we're we're hitting all the uh, like every everybody every which way. We also have one of the writers wrote Twenty Seven Dresses, The Devil Wears Prada, shocking. Yeah, uh, and Ooh, Crazy Ex Girlfriend, a bunch of that. Yeah. She's a producer Aline for that. Rush McKenna, yeah, that's right. Yes, and then we have a, oh, even more shocking. Oh my god, where did they? Did they have a dartboard somewhere? So we also have one of the writers of. Fifty Shades of Grey, Saving Mr. Banks, and Venom, which is apparently one person named Kelly Marcel. That that's mm. a that a person has a story by credit, and then we have another person named Steve Zissis or whatever. I c- couldn't even guess how to pronounce this one. It's Z I S S I S. It's probably like Steve Z's. Uh, and this person uh wrote or was in Happy Death Day too. Uh, but. Yeah, so really all over the place with this crew. Very interesting. Um, what do you think happened? Do you think Kelly Marcel came in? Or not Kelly Marcel, excuse me. Do you think um, Aline Brush McKenna came in with her Devil Wears Prada script and then they just like... This, please. Wrote some of it, like changed some of their names and then, yeah. yeah. It's probably it. But also, I haven't seen that movie, so I don't really know. Wait, ever? No. I know Adrian so- Grenier is the real bad guy. Thanks, Twitter. That's all I got. That's most of That's the funny. things Adrian Grenier is in. I know Entourage, he's the real bad guy, and this. That's so um, interesting. Yeah, I do feel like out of having been in the culture just since it came out, I feel like I get yeah. it. Uh, but, okay. yeah. yeah, I don't know. She's like a mean yeah. boss, but actually she's she's tough but fair or something, probably. Devil Wears, pra- the Devil Wears Prada is about how actually she's bad. Oh, okay. I should Maybe watch it. should watch it, Nando. I, mean, I should. I love movies with um, Adrian Grenier, for one, but I want to say the Tooch is in there somewhere, so... The Tooch. I'm always down for some Tooch, yeah, but who isn't? guys, we're filibustering, and by that I mean I'm filibustering, because I can't wait. Because you this. believe in the integrity of the filibuster. I, <laughs> I Our do. democracy cannot crumble. You guys, I want to make I want to make sure that there's no sort of uh, Cruella reform passed by a majority of any anybody really, um, because guys, speaking of Cruella, I have the IMDb summary for Cruella. Oh, this God. is this is what I'm gonna just say. This is what the IMDb page. If you were to go on the page right now and read the summary for Cruella, as far as I can find, this is it. I oh my god! Um, well, Diggins gets to pick who goes first. I'm not going to say any words. It's going to be like the last one. Diggins, you're going to say your thing. You're going to say I'm done, and then DJ's going to say his thing. So okay, um, or or DJ and then Diggins. Diggins, do you want to go first or second? DJ can go first. All right, okay. cool. So okay. DJ, and then you're going to say like I'm done. Go Diggins, and then Diggins is going to go. I don't worry. I'm done, and go Diggins are not in the title or, or not in the uh, okay. are in okay. the summary, so I won't be confused. Good, good, good. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, In this new reimagining of the Disney villain Cruella de Vil, we see the exploration of this young up-and-coming fashion designer as she must fight through the plural, the fight through the trials and tribulations of London's fashion world as we see how she became scarred from the demons of her past. Okay, DJ is supposed done, to say, no yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. sorry, right. sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, experience the untold <laughs> origins of, uh, of, um, b- beloved villain Cruella de Vil. Um, see, uh, from her time, uh, as a, as a young girl, Dreaming of breaking into the fashion world to her rise to the top of the punk scene in London, uh, punk fashion scene in London. Uh, this movie tells the story of everyone's favorite <laughs> dog hating villainess. Oh my god. Uh, all right. I'm gonna give it to Diggins. Um, 
Ah, I mean, it. yeah, go dig it. Woo! Both of you were dogs. Um, no, uh, both of you were way off. However, Diggins had <laughs> <laughs> Diggins. You had like the the uh, you 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 had the vibe, and honestly, there was a point where I was like, "Oh, okay, cool," and then you kept going. But I'm going to read you. This is it, word for word. A live action prequel feature film following a young Cruella Deville. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> yeah, no, that's what we. That's the best explanation of what we watched, kind of. Except I mean, this character is yeah. Yeah, you would say so. Except I, I think you could amend it to a live action prequel feature film following a young character named Cruella Deville. But so I don't see even wrong. Also, yeah, wh- whether she is or is not the Cruella Deville you think she is, I, I'd say that yeah. part's up for grabs. But yeah, Diggins, when you said like, "Come watch this movie of Cruella Deville," I was like, "Yes." And there was like a pause, and I didn't want to be like, "All right, that's it." But uh, that's that's it. So congratulations. That's what Diggins. put him over the edge. Seriously. Well, I mean, no, because Dig- well, Diggins had the tenor of like, "This is a movie. Yeah. Come watch this movie," uh, which was very important. But um, uh, but yeah, you both. I, I'm very glad you both acknowledged the prequeliness, and you both said <laughs> Cruella Deville, the full name. Um, but yeah. yeah. This is uh that's what this that's what it is. It's a live action. I, I suppose film I accept. following a young Corral Deville. I mean, I I don't think there's any wiggle room here. I I I'm the first one to throw it to another game so that I can marshal another game. But I do not think this deserves one. Um, no, no, no. That's fine. I mean, you'd think that Diggins would maybe yield to the sad, sad Knicks fan of this podcast, and he gets his you know real world triumph as the. Uh, the Bucks bandwagon uh, leader, but you know it's fine. It's totally, it's totally cool. I don't even need the win. It's no big deal. Honestly. Well, if he did that, he'd never get to win because the Knicks oh. would always be a sad, pitiful mess of a team that's, that's, that would yeah, garner his sympathy. True. If that's my true. ability to win is dependent on the Knicks' ability to win, I mean, I might as well just stop competing. Yeah. Speaking of competing, here's what my follow-up game would have been. I think this might this should be the game in the future. I think this would be the most fun. Um, okay. I and so take it. You've already won. You're not in any danger here. But I have the three taglines for the movie according to IMDb. Um, so this is like stuff that would be on the poster under the words Cruella. Um, if I want to take a guess at what it might be, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I think I've seen this poster. Okay, then you're welcome about. to take a shot. I mean, isn't one of them, like, bad? It is like that. Yes, that's right. Or, yeah, something <laughs> like misunderstood, daring, adventurous, uh, uh, sassy, female. classy, a little badassy. Oh, um, God, you're both gatekeep, so close. <laughs> gatekeep, guess, like, girl boss. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, one of them is a line from the movie. I remember this line spoken by a character, uh, um, and it's in the neighborhood of what DJ had started I'm with. I'm brilliant but. and bad. That's it. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant bad, a little bad. bit mad. That's it. But also, oh, also, hello, cruel world. That was one of them. And then the other one is, this may meet the queen of mean, which she's not oh, a queen. That doesn't work. And, and, and she's barely mean. Um I mean, it depends on what part of the movie, but... She's mean if you consider, like, being a good person mean. She's mean in terms of, like, she causes traffic accidents. It's probably tough to deal with her as a police officer, but hey, man. Yeah, I... Can't can't blame her for making their job difficult. This world has, like, a... This version of, of London has a rule that if you... Get a, if the police like are no longer you're no longer in the police's line of sight like that's it they no longer oh, yeah. have any legal ability to punish you. There's a lot of movies it. that do that though. Like we've talked about this, for, I'm sure about how like once you escape, that's it. Congrats. Yeah, this is the Grand Theft Auto? Right. She went from five but, stars and then they yep. flashed away and then the police forgot. But yes, I mean, exactly. like li- this one feels super egregious, and that it's literally like they leave the police's line of sight, and they're not even looking for them anymore. Yeah, it's fair. That's fair. And it's not like they're like not Cruella Deville that whole time. You know, they're Cruella. It's yeah. a Cruella Deville Deville problem. So you kind of figure the next place she shows up, the police should go to that, but they can't be bothered. Um, all right, Diggins, since you won. You get to go first. 
What do you think of Cruella 20, 2021's whatever it is, Cruella? So, um, in the middle of watching this, I sent you guys a text. Yes, you did. was that this is one of the hardest movies to get through in a long time that we've done. Uh, and that happened because I had gotten to a point in the movie where I was like, so this has got to be like getting close to the climax, right? Because I feel like I've been watching this forever. And that was an hour <laughs> of this like two and a half hour movie. Uh, oh, it man. feels very long. Yeah. Um, okay. I feel so you you went over earlier, Nando, how there were like five people who wrote the script of like wildly different backgrounds, and man, does this movie feel like that's true? Because mm. it feels like it's being pulled in a few different directions. Any one of which probably could have worked as a movie, but it never commits to any of them, and so it just feels weird. Because it's like, I don't know, with some of the performances and stuff, it feels like it's trying to be big and campy and kind of silly, which I think would have worked. But then also, it feels like it takes the idea of a Cruella origin story very, very seriously. Uh, And then there's also some kind of, like, real Devil Wears Prada, like, diving into how this kind of person thinks about the world, this kind of, like, really tough and cruel, not to be on the nose, female boss, like, operates, and, like, how that's kind of bad. And I don't know. There's just all these different elements, and it's like, I wish this movie would pick one. I wish they'd pick one. Instead, we have this kind of weird melange of... A movie that feels like it's trying to be camp, but also being really, really straight and serious about everything. So it's silly, but it's not fun. Um, which means I don't take anything that's happening seriously, but also I don't think it's funny or like fun. So it's just kind of a miserable thing to watch. <laughs> uh And also, uh I don't know, I think that's my main opinion. It's it's not silly enough to be fun, but also too silly to be taken seriously, which means that it's just not enjoyable at all. Interesting. DJ, what about you? What do you think of Cruella? I don't know who this movie is for. I was talking to a coworker about this because, you know, I mentioned, oh, I saw Cruella. It's like, oh, what do you think? I'm like, I, like, I thought it was okay, but like, so the movie's not for me. And I don't even know that this movie is, like, for kids. Because they're like, oh, like, should I take my kids to it? It's like, I don't know. Like, if your kid loves Hot Topic, then, yeah, you should, like, definitely mm. take your kid. What kid doesn't? But, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know then. Because the, the problem is, like, so, like, Maleficent is, is I find, a useful example. Because, so, Maleficent, right? Like, if your son or daughter like, stands Maleficent and wants to see a movie about, you know, a made-up backstory and fleshes that character out really well and with, like, a really solid Angelina Jolie, Angelina Jolie performance that's like, yeah, go see Maleficent, because that is, like, a good movie and I can see why, you know, your kid might enjoy it. But, like, this movie, it's like, Cruel DeVille is, like, not... I don't want to say super notable, but there's not a lot of depth to her character in 101 Dalmatians. Hey, like, little child, do you want to see a movie about the woman who wanted to kill a bunch of dogs? <laughs> yeah! For fashion! <laughs> she wanted to kill them for the purpose of fashion, which is good instead. And, like, for the purpose of 101 Dalmatians, that works for that character at, like, a super one-dimensional level, but you shouldn't make a movie about that character. Like, I don't think people are going to get stoked about that. So then you're left with, okay, well, what does this movie do well? I don't know. There's some cool, like, aesthetic stuff with some of the, um, like, montage fashion bits that I look at that and I go, that's cool. And that lasts for all of about 15 minutes in total. And then there's a heist part that's not good. And there's some pretty decent character act performances kind of like Emma Stone is really good and Emma Thompson's one note and those are all of my feelings on Cruella it's like 
a uh, 5 out of 10 movie that I don't know what it's for. To the movie's credit, it's not the train wreck that it could have been. So I'll, I'll give it that. Uh, yeah, that's what I got. Wow, you guys. I can't believe we got two no's. From uh, mine's the, from not a guys. no. Mine's a maybe if we had to assign a word to it. It's a no compared or, to my no. yes. Yes, okay. this movie is great. Worth oh all God. the millions of dollars it costs to make. This was a movie for the ages, you guys. It told the story of Cruella DeVille. She was a fashion something or other who wanted to kill puppies. And this movie was about a character vaguely in the shape of that. But if you didn't actually know that this was about Cruella DeVille, you would have a hard time figuring this out like you'd you'd, i feel like you'd have a hard time connecting it if the names weren't all the same and i find this movie i think this movie was fine i don't think it was quite enough i i i think it like was kind of fighting with itself to pick a lane or genre or whatever that it was in um honestly it's so weird how this movie is joker again or something how we have to keep having these movies why? Right. What did we do as a society to signal, no. besides spend billions of dollars seeing Joker, what else did we do that made people think we wanted more Jokers? Honestly, I think this movie's better than Joker, at least. I'll give it that much. Hmm. I think it's... Maybe. I don't think it's anywhere near as memorable as Joker. I feel like this movie will come and go real quick. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think DJ was right when he said it's like kind of a 5 out of 10 movie. It's really not like a train wreck. It's just not very good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think this movie is okay. Uh, but the things that were fun about it weren't what was important to the movie. I think the bit in the middle was fun. I think the bits, honestly, it's it's funny. It doesn't feel like Joker quite as much as it feels like the sequel to Joker, where it's like, okay, now that we've gotten over all of the bullshit let's make an origin movie for a batman villain in a gotham city that can kind of support that uh because that's what it felt like to me was like the cruella Deville, like harley quinn movie or something where mm. you have a secret identity and a villain and it just felt like like the catwoman movie i don't know quite which movie it is but um the yeah the way that you can like outrun cops in a garbage truck i don't know it was fine uh, i i would say overall I didn't, it was, this movie's way too long, uh, and that hurt it. If it was an hour and a half long, I'd probably actually kind of like it. I'd probably be like, it's, it's, not, it's not so bad. Uh, but it, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty dumb. I feel like the movie is asking a lot from its audience, um, to which, again, I don't know who that is, but there's, there's so much to not keep track of, but in terms of tonally, you're kind of bouncing around for, like, character motivations, what they want, what they're doing, and all of those inconsistencies that it, it's... The movie asks a lot of you, and I totally agree with Diggins that, like, I could see how this movie's so draining. I will say, like, watching it in a the theater, it's like, Diggins, how you said that helped with Army of the Dead. I think that watching this in the theaters helped me with this because I didn't have the opportunity to get distracted, but there were other people in the theater who, like, with half an hour left to go in, in the movie, like, what you were talking about, oh, the movie should be about done now, they had had it. Like, phones on, talking to each other, and, and honestly, I think you should have a certain amount of, like, politeness in, like, when you go to a movie, but I do, like, think the movie has a job to keep its audience engaged, and I don't think this movie really could do that to much effect, so, yeah. Are you telling me that these people checked out right around Mark Strong's star-making turn? Oh, God. (laughs) The the line might as well have been, hey, listen, exposition now, please? Like, fucking... Oh, I hate that so much. Yeah, his, his line might as well have been, hey... I, you know how you're kind of supposed to be crawled to develop by the end of this? I have a box that kind of figures that out. So if you want to see the box... I can show it to you, and that'll explain all the way, all, all the little bits, all the pieces that are going to put the rest of the story together. Because at this but point, what, we're creating this the, other like, character. Physical attributes. I mean, character-wise, it's not going to make any sense that you become the person in that movie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's yeah. It's an insane. I mean, I don't know. 
What do you guys think? Let's talk about actors, first of all, because they uh-huh. are our betters, um, and they are they should be praised at every turn. What did we think of Emma Stone? Uh, she's a British person born on the streets of London, right? Yeah, <laughs> correct. Um, I thought Emma Stone was great. Like, I, I, I will say, it, I think it's the thing that saves this movie is that I find her to be a captivating actress. And, you know, I think for what she had to do in this role, I, I thought she was good. Like, I will... I will throw that out there in, into the universe. I, I would I say, think, uh, I mean, like I said, there's kind of a serving mini masters thing here where it's like the character has to be serious, but also is like completely ridiculous and it doesn't mm-hmm. right settle. But I think within those confines, she's doing a good job. She's very big in the role, which I think is what yes. it needed. See, that's my problem with her. Besides the fact that she's great. As, like, you know, Cruella. I kind of wish there was more of a Two Face kind of thing going on. Because I feel like Cruella was evil Cruella, like, you know, super villain, whatever. And I feel mm-hmm. like Estella was also mostly Cruella. Just like she didn't yell as much. But, like, I wish there was. For a movie that kind of halfway through decides it's a, like a split personality movie, I wish those existed. You know, like, I. That was my only thing about her performance that I think kind of lost me. Um, her English accent is bizarre, but it's kind of funny. Incredible. Yeah. Um, I mean, she's going for like an over the top thing, though, right? So, well, she's going you know, like, for like the original Cruella, which is like yeah. very much a goofy, not at all realistic, over the top British accent. Yeah. So, like, whatever. I'm not. I'm not going to take away points for that. For keeping points. Yeah, I mean, I kind of wish... Yeah. I... So, here's a question. This is something I probably should ask before. Uh, how how much do you guys remember the 101 Dalmatians movie? The cartoon? I probably watched it, like, most recently three years ago, so enough. Oh, wow. I okay. probably watched it most recently when I was, like, six, so... Yeah. <laughs> same. I think I watched... You know, just go back and... Listen, Disney Plus did not have a lot of options in its inception, so you'd be like, yeah, I'm going to watch 101 Dalmatians now. I got to get my fucking money's worth. Wow. It's true. TJ I just said that because you said the word inception. No. Oh, God, I was, I, I was, I was like, oh, yeah, DJ, didn't have a lot of options, huh? So I guess you watched the whole Jeff Goldblum Discovery Channel series then, huh? <laughs> no? All right. Well, then I think it had options. Not that I don't think this move, the 101 Dalmatians movie is good. Like, I agree with Dickens. I haven't seen it since I was two. But it it did, uh, I, it didn't, I don't know if seeing it would have helped my understanding of this movie. Um, oh, hell no. How, how about the one from 1999 or whatever with uh, Glenn Close? That was pretty much this. You guys seen that? Oh, gosh. No. I'm not sure. Or if I, I did ever, when I was a kid, maybe. I'm not sure I ever saw it in its entirety. I remember seeing bits and pieces as a kid, but that's about it. I do remember that uh, Glenn Close is supposed to be a great Cruella. Yeah, she's pretty fun as a Cruella de Vil type. She calls them, she doesn't say puppies, she says poopies, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, besides that, I haven't seen that movie since it came out either, but that was more recent than this, uh, or than the, the original. So, I don't know. I really don't know enough about the Cruella de Vil movies to put some of these things together. There was a lot of this where I was like, is that guy from the, the other ones? And, uh, I still don't know. I still the can't tell. Is mostly no. But there are then it- <laughs> roughly five characters in this movie that are in the other ones. But and even the them- ones that you think they are. And I'm kind of like, okay, so that one's from the other one. So were they this in the other one? Like, how much were, how many, how much was everyone related to everyone else? And like, did they, would they have known about each other? I think this movie as a prequel to 101 Dalmatians, the cartoon, is way off, right? It's like, not. It doesn't it, work. It, it, it's actually impossible. Like, okay, cool. You, there's no way that, um, Pongo and uh, what's the name of the other dog? Perdita. 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 There's no way that like Pongo and Perdita were gifts from Cruella Deville. That's like fucking impossible. <laughs> so <laughs> that is an insane plot twist. All, all, all this is then spoiler alert. By the way, I should have thrown that up earlier. But anyway, all this is is it's two things, right? So, and I mean by this, this movie. I know why Disney made this movie. It's so they could just, like, have more space for the Disney store. You have... They wanted a Joker for them. 
Yeah, and like you get that part of the Disney store now with all the Cruella merchandise, right? And hot hot topics like yes, let's get all that licensed merch. So like I get that part, but like I think the other part too is to set up a new 101 Dalmatians movie. It's the only like explanation for like the writing portions of this movie, not for like the reason why this movie was created. Really, but for yeah, it you has think to be. we're getting a new 101 Dalmatians movie after this? Yeah, about absolutely. what? You know, I don't know why what they is just Cruella bonk her head and decide she wants to kill dogs now? What's the movie? What's well, no, it's got to be. Well, mm, yeah, I mean. This movie, if get, anything, kind of. Prick, there's no way you could do 101 Dalmatians now. Unless yeah, the idea like that the character in characters. this movie would just decide that she wants to kill a bunch of dogs is, like, insane. Yeah. Dogs killed her mom. There's that. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but then she had the opportunity to kill dogs, and she didn't kill the dogs. I was yeah, like, okay, true. fucking, yeah, kill those dogs. That's not a great thing to do as a person, but that's kind of what this character seems like they would do. And then it turns out she didn't do that either. So it's like... I I would love it if this movie, like, leaned in hard and were like, the dogs were, like, actually evil and yeah. maliciously killed her mom. And she goes on some kind of, like, revenge quest against dogs because of right? that. That Killing all the incredible. Dalmatians in London, like it's like you know, like she's going one by one. Just are you the one? No, John Wick style, and eventually trying to get oh, to the yeah. ones that got her. But it's no, the reverse yeah. John Wick. It is the reverse John Wick. That's true. <laughs> the dogs killed her Russian mafia son, <laughs> and she has to get the revenge on uh, on them because she misses little Theon. Um, I, I I know it sounds preposterous, but like I just think that. That that's where Disney wants to go with this. I uh, I don't know. I can see a shared universe of movies that Cruella is part of, where like she goes and meets up with the Doctor Facilier or something. But I do not see a version of this Cruella that does what the Cruella in One Hundred One Dalmatians does enough to make One Hundred One Dalmatians happen. Unless maybe, maybe and this they is, do like a Maleficent two where Cruella they do a Cruella two that's the plot of the original movie except it's from her point of view and she's the good guy. Yes, so I did think maybe I, I so this is part of me not really remembering what happens in One Hundred One Dalmatians. Could One Hundred One Dalmatians be perceived by the little baby Dalmatians? And they're just getting it all wrong. Like, they see this lady in, like, a fake Dalmatian coat. And they're like, oh, my God, she wants to make a coat out of all of us. Let's run away. And then it's like, no, she's your aunt. She just wants, she's taking you for the weekend because we're going on vacation. Oh, no, you think her friends are trying to get you. They have to put you in a big burlap sack, I guess, because it's the 60s or 70s. And we don't have nice dog cages. But, like, they're not going to kill you. I was wondering, could, could that, could you interpret 101 Dalmatians that way? I mean, could you reinterpret it that way? Certainly. I like, mean... Is there, I guess, is there a point in the original 101 Dalmatians where Cruella speaks to a human being It's in a room with only human beings and says, I'm going to kill your puppies or something? 100%, like, yes. Okay, yeah, then I guess not. But <laughs> that's the only way I'll accept this uh, I, as a prequel. Yeah, I... I and I'm struggling now. I'm like, okay, well, let's say it is, like, a new fucking, like, 101 Dalmatians movie. And, like, do they totally flip the script? Because, to be fair, the they did some, like, revisionist history with the Maleficent, st- Maleficent stuff, like, with the prequelness. So, it, it, I mean, this is way more, like, out in left field. But I'm just saying it's not impossible. Well, yeah, but I feel like with Maleficent, and bear, bearing in mind, I haven't seen either of them. I have no interest in uh, I never like these st- stupid things, <laughs> these weird little Disney prequels. Every so often one of them's okay, uh, but usually they're just, I don't know, nothing. Uh, and that's not because they're bad, that's just because I'm not a humongous Disney fan, clearly. I don't know who any of these mm-hmm. characters are. But, um, what I understood with Maleficent was they took the core thing her character does and kind of worked backwards from there. I'm like, okay, why does she make Snow White yeah. do that? But with this, they took the core thing that Cruella Deville does and worked backwards from her not doing it. Like, yeah. we have a Cruella Deville that will never make a code of puppies. So then what is this movie about? What am I watching? It's almost like she... It's, it's a lot like Joker, honestly, because at the end, you're like, okay... That's Cruella 1, and she's going to inspire a copycat Cruella, and that's the real Cruella we all know and love, right, right, or right, something right. like that, because none of the rest of this makes sense. Or the other one that I was going to, I would have taken, uh, what's her name? Uh, Emma Thompson, 
eventually goes crazy in jail and becomes evil Cruella and starts takes up their Cruella hairstyle and starts kidnapping puppies to kill them. That's the other way I'd go with this. Maybe if you do the only the only way this works now, they're just like kind of talking it out. Um, the the only way this works is if you open the like remake Hundred One Dalmatians movie with like just something insane happening to her that that truly makes her like, yep, I must kill all dogs now. Um, something crazy, like a bunch of dogs kill her mom. <laughs> by yeah, where's her the off net a somehow? <laughs> Oh my god! I yeah, know, no. right? <laughs> All right, let's talk about this movie. So it's yeah, got those people we said. Uh, other actors in this, by the way. So you got the two Emmas, Emma One and Emma mm-hmm. Two. We'll call them. Uh, we also got the friends, little Goofus and Gallant or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Jasper and Horace. Do you guys yes. recognize these actors? They're actually. You probably do, kind of, without knowing it. Um, I, I, recognize, I recognized Horace. I did not recognize Jasper. So Jasper, besides being in the Yesterday movie but not being the main character, um, he oh. was the guy on Game of Thrones who was like, stop with the slave business, Daenerys. Oh, We're in charge of the oh, place shit. and like I wear a ring on my chest or something. That was like, his like outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. He's that guy, among other things. Um, cool, 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 cool. Now, so that character, actor's name is Joel Fry. Uh, he was fine. Couldn't quite get a read on his character. Still don't really know what his deal is. Um, yeah. Then we got Horace, or excuse me. Yeah, Horace, played by Paul Walter Hauser. Mm-hmm. So he, like me and Dickens were talking before, is from Itania. Um, do you see Itania, DJ? Yeah, I love Itania. Huge fan. Yeah, so he's the guy that has the actually does the Itanying. He's like the oh yeah, hired oh it's, muscle. All, it's all all coming back, guys. It's all coming back. He's also in something pretty wild that I had to like kind of. I was going through his IMDb. Uh, he was in an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, you remember when Charlie starts working at a high school as a janitor? You ever seen that episode? They- it's like v- vague, vaguely keeps keeps saying words. He takes under his wing an overweight child who wears Juggalo makeup, and oh my God. puts the kid in blackface and like, yeah, see, this is the makeup you kids wear and stuff. Um, uh, as a, as a joke to like, because it's also the episode where um they they do the Lethal Weapon prequel or uh, fake Lethal Weapon sequel where um one of them decides to wear blackface and everyone's like that's disturbing um but this so this was the kid the little juggalo kid um paul walter hauser and he's done a bazillion things since then but that's the one that i was like oh yeah i remember that kid wait how um, old is he that he was a kid and it's always sunny well, always sunny has been around for an eternity so he was born in 1986 but also you know he's like he doesn't look like not a kid or like he's you know he's a he's an actor kid where he could be twenty five but maybe you're like I think that's a child because this show so he was, he in was this really in... he was really greasing it up in that episode you it, see exactly you yeah he was in twenty it was in twenty ten so it was eleven years ago so yeah you know he's, he's in it. he was in his mid twenties um but so those two were in it they were great I mean they were fine I liked him a lot um like we said you got Mark Strong as John the Valet uh also an actor named John McCrea his character named Artie who is like the a, another cohort of hers is this guy in the movie at all or in the the original cartoon one not, not as, that I don't, as, I don't as far as I know like I said there's only like five characters in this movie that are in the original yeah. Okay. Uh, then you also have Emily Beecham as Catherine, the mother of Cruella. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> and she is not uh, Ron Howard's daughter. Um, however, she seems like Ron Howard's daughter. Um, so much so that I looked at a picture. I looked at like her IMDb, and I saw a poster for a movie called Daphne that she was in. And it looks just like Bryce Dallas Howard. Like, I'm still not convinced it's not. But it's not. It's her. Um, mm. And her job is to fall off a cliff, so she's really didn't matter that much. Bummer, right? Yeah, right. Uh, and then the only other two actors of note, uh, we have Roger and Anita, played by Kiva Novak, who is from um, uh, What We Do in the Shadows, among other things. 
And then, we, so that's Roger, and then Anita, played by Kirby Howell Baptiste, uh, from Good Place. Oh, she's Simone, the, uh, yep. the Australian. Oh, she's F. also. I, I knew I recognized her. I could not place it, and that's it. Thank you. You're very good. She is going to be playing Death in the new adaptation I... of Sandman, and some people are very mad about it. Well, those so people can get fucked. Yeah, she's not nearly as bad as the one that's apparently John Constantine's uh, sibling or something. But it's not blonde. I will not accept a not blonde John Constantine. I don't care what else the actor, you, you know, just dye your hair blonde. He's blonde. Uh, that is a recessive gene. So you got you to gotta work to keep that in uh, in your character backstory. I want to say somebody else from this movie has also also showed up in that uh, IMDb summary, but I don't remember which one. I want to say somebody else. Oh, it's David Thewlis. No. Um, <laughs> oh, Jack David Thewlis. Yeah, he plays a character named John D. I don't know that movie. That that'll oh, be yes. that'll be a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's a uh, that's a whole cast, isn't it? We talked about all of them, and they all did great. No notes. They all Just did do your thing. They did great. None were better than any of the rest. No one was phoning it in. Let me think. Actually, I think that's fair. I don't think anyone was phoning it in. Mark I Strong was wasn't it in phoning it in. Well, that that's fair. Dickens, you were phoning it in quite a lot as a watcher of the movie, but no one else was. Mark Strong kind of was, but not really. They just I thought didn't give him just anything Mark to do. Up the yeah, place. yeah. He's like, I'm the butler. This is my job to be the butler. Yeah, I am the butler. So like, good for him. Get that, get that money, Mark Strong. Like, you know, no, you know, do it. Is he? How many movies is he in where he just wears a suit around? Hey, I know that's Kingsman. I feel like that's a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, probably countless. Like the one with the the um, what's the other one he was in, um, Kick Ass. I feel like he probably wore a suit the whole time. Mm, the man yeah, knows how to wear a suit, but still, a little, a little surprising. Shazam, not really a suit, but close. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do we think of this movie? What what what, what was the weirdest part? Was it the part where she, the dog killed her mom? That dog knows how to drop kick. I will say that dog. Drop kicked like a champ because the dog would go over the the like whatever right like that's definitely what would happen. Yeah, I don't know. Like I don't think a dog I can tackle it, like an NFL lineman. I thought it did for a moment. I was like, oh, the dogs also died because I was like, there's no way that they, they like yeah like tackled, stopped short, and only knocked this woman off of a cliff. But apparently that is exactly what happened. They're all fine. Yeah. You can't kill dogs in this movie. It'd be unthinkable, Diggins. You it's monster. unthinkable that a dog would die in the Cruella movie. It can't do that. I think this movie was like trying to tread the line of likable. Well, it's like, we gotta sell the products. And that's the thing. Like, you gotta I feel like sell Cruella had the products. That's the, that's the thing of like, I'm not even necessarily opposed to the idea of like doing prequels or reimaginings about the villain where we, like, look at things from their point of view and we have some kind of anti-hero perspective or, like, or something. But you gotta pick someone who can actually do the thing that they're a villain for without losing the audience. Because, like, I mean, I feel like we've harped on this so much already. But, yeah, like, you can't do a Cruella movie where she pointedly doesn't kill dogs. Like, what's the fucking point? Like, I know we've harped on it, but it's huge. It's such a huge thing, because, you know, and again, they made the money for money, sure, whatever. But here's a follow-up question. Why put, like, the amount of effort into this movie then? And, like, so you know what we should talk about? We should talk about the soundtrack. The soundtrack was, like, I, I uh, somehow songs I liked became ear poison, like, halfway through this movie. But, like, why spend so much movie money on this movie if it's, you know... You you can't sell the premise. Just be like, all right, boys, we're gonna phone in a Cruella movie. We're gonna cast, you know, effing. I don't want to like name an actor who's bad, but we're we're gonna cast bad actor number three to play Cruella, and and that's it. That's gonna that's we're gonna cash in and and make that money, baby. They like spent money on this movie and put effort into it. A lot of well, I don't know about effort, but definitely a lot of money. Definitely a lot of money. It was a I lot, think a lot of, money. of work went in. Yeah. yeah, and it looks good. It does. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Well, it's fine. Yeah. So it's... I don't know. It just confuses me as a viewer and consumer, like the existence and premise of this movie. Like in terms of nitpicking, let me think. Um, isn't it weird how she was born with half and half hair? I love a that. A thing that's like never been documented before ever, but yet somehow that's like. Her thing going on. Isn't that weird? Like, Isn't right out of the womb. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a full head of hair, which does yeah. happen. 
What I love about her hair is in the first half of the movie, everyone who so much as glances at her hair thinks it's some kind of monstrous aberration that yeah. like, <laughs> makes them gasp in horror. And then in the second half of the movie, no one even comments. I, by the way, if you're going to do a weird, like, hair thing, why isn't Estella just... Oh, maybe because, like, who she truly is. I don't know, but I'm just going to keep going with this thought. Have Estella be the red-haired one, and then her persona is the black and white. Like, don't don't make it that she had to, like, dye her hair uh, red. Maybe that she had to dye her hair black and white. That's what I was well, getting. Well, DJ, towards. how could we do... Uh shocking reveal uh, unless there's some kind of very obvious physical trait that everyone would immediately realize who this child is. Right! Like, uh... Mm. Which, you know, cool, I guess. Oh, cool, movie. I guess. Uh, I don't know, what else is nitpickable about this movie? What's on brand for us? Alternatively, great job, boys! Any recommendations? Honestly, <laughs> I'm like, kidding, I'm kidding. This movie, kidding. It's, it's, it's about Cruella, but it's like so not about it's about a character named cruella yes i agree i so agree rises through the fashion ranks and also wants to get revenge and also his two-face and also what else uh like is i don't know i have i mean if we're just going through nitpicks right now i have very serious questions about how her like uh midpoint plan is supposed to be functioning Oh, well, let's talk about this. Yeah, yeah let's this, talk no, about I, I want to talk about this. This is good. So, so we hit the midpoint of this movie. Um, after she finds out that not only was the Baroness, who she has started to work for, and is like, seems to think that she's good at doing fashion, and so even though she's clearly a bad person, she's like, man, oh, I'm getting my recognition. This is good. Um... But then she finds out that not only is the Baroness the person whose grounds they were on when her mom died, but she used a dog whistle to deliberately kill her mom with Dalmatians. It wasn't just a tragic accident. It was dog murder. (laughs) Yeah. After that stunning revelation, um, they, she decides that she wants to like ruin the Baroness. And so she fully embraces the Cruella persona and yes. stages like, uh, what would you describe these as? Gorilla like, fashion stunts. Gorilla yeah. fashion stunts, and like making her own fashion stuff in her dilapidated home with Oscar and not Oscar. Wow, why did I say Oscar? With Horace and Jasper, she invites dime store David Bowie to come make dresses in in their house, <laughs> so that she can do these guerrilla fashion stunts but the whole premise right is that she is like tanking the baroness's fashion line by doing this right but right how does that make any sense is she like actually says she actually started a fashion line this cruella is she's selling dresses in stores that people are buying and that's why baroness's sales are dropping or does she just make her look passe and so people just stop buying her dresses and are buying other... What What is actually happening here? I think she's just trying to bruise um, the Baroness's ego question. by showing up at her events and being like, but, no one but, likes her anymore. She's old news, baby. Right. But, there, but there's, like, specific newspaper headlines and people telling the Baroness things about how her sales are going down and... Uh, Cru- this Cruella is the hot new thing and everyone wants her stuff and it's like does she have stuff? Can people buy the Cruella stuff? Are people buying the Cruella stuff instead <laughs> of the Baroness stuff? What exactly is happening here? Yeah it feels like at a certain point a, she could just po- stop doing the plot and then just go I'm gonna be a fashion designer and then buy out the Baroness with all my money because I'm gonna make lots and lots and lots of money and I'll just get the key from her that way. Maybe I'll hire my own dogs to kill her or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'll train my it's own a... attack Dalmatians that can throw her off a cliff. <laughs> yeah. It's a great point, too, because while all this is going on, and, right, obviously the questions of how the fuck is Cruella gaining this notoriety, she is, like, committing, like, high-level crimes. 
problems in the process, right? Is she like, though? Is most, she, I mean, it does feels like it's just annoying. The the one where um, I think it's Jasper like uses a seatbelt to lock her in her own. Oh no, yeah, that was it great. Can't be legal. <laughs> it can't be legal. Yeah, but it can't be that. Like I feel like it's not legal. But I feel like you'd be like the police would be like, yeah, all right, we'll check and see if we can find her, and then they just forget about it. This isn't that big of a deal. <laughs> this isn't like she didn't do any crime. I feel like most of the stuff she does is like, oh my god, she put an extra spotlight and it made it said a message on on a building. She did some sort of semi permanent graffiti or like she blocked. She had she drove a garbage truck without a permit, like. Most of the, her crimes are just, like, misdemeanors at best. I mean, yeah, I mean, a, a policeman could arrest her for, like, disturbing the peace or public nuisance or whatever if they really wanted to, but it doesn't feel like it would be high on their list, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like how some of the Batman villains do crimes, and Batman beats them up, and it's like, that really wasn't a crime. He would just did a weird party at his own house. Like, I, it's weird that you, I understand why you're suspicious of him, but, like... What he did is it that much of a crime? I think the funny thing about her is uh, the funny thing about that middle part of the movie where she becomes, you know, gorilla fashion queen is that I don't think either of you watch. I can't remember. Did either of you watch Emily and Perry when that was a big not. thing? No. So like the back half of that season, she does that. Not she does that. Sorry, she is working for a designer who gets that done to him. A like. God, I don't even know. Jabberwockies kind of like looking bunch of like hip hop fashion guys who are like cool and Daft Punk also kind of. And they do weird gorilla fat. I want to say they do the same exact thing with the garbage truck, too. But like and then that's... it turns out that those guys are actually Emily in a wig under her persona of M.E. <laughs> oh, that would be so great. But no, she actually just needs them to be friends. Uh, so that's that's pretty much it. But. Yeah, like that bit, when when it happens in Cruella, or in uh, Emily and Paris, everybody's like, oh my god, they're even better at fashion than you. Nobody's like, arrest them, because it would be silly. But also the whole movie's silly, so I guess, you know. You're telling me that that her boss doesn't just go, like, we need to murder these guerrilla fashion people. They need to die. I'm not going to say he doesn't do that, because I don't remember but probably not. But also wouldn't be that, you know, it's fashion, baby. It's high stakes. I don't know. How much does that, does any of that map to Devil Wears Prada? Like I said, I haven't seen that. So is it like, is there a bit like that? Does she have a fashion rival? I don't. It's, uh, it's not so extreme. It's not so extreme as this, right? Um, it, it's more of the like coming up and it's like, oh, maybe this person has some potential. Mm, you know what I mean? But is she like is it does so I know Meryl Streep's char- character is like the Anna Wintour type. Does she have a like challenger fashion person, or is she just like still at the top? I don't think so. I don't. I don't think there's any up and comer. I don't think okay. like someone's gonna be like you're wrong, DJ, and probably, but I don't. I don't recall. So. That's enough for me. Sorry. I feel like there's not this where she has a fashion yeah. villain like who wears a mask so that she can hide her identity even though she is the like, person come on everybody yeah <laughs> right and yeah, you know uh... what to, to be to the movie's credit in the beginning cruella shows up and everybody's like oh is this cruella and i'm like you guys should know right and then i'm like well i don't know it's like the seven or 1960s like 1970s they don't have great cameras maybe they can't see her from far away i don't know um but then at one point a character is just like i'm pretty sure it's her and then they're right it's like characters on the circle that are just casually like i don't think that's a real guy and you're like yes you believe in your instincts uh that that happens right before the third act and i really liked it i was like i kind of wanted that character to win she doesn't though spoiler alert uh, what else is weird about this movie? How about the fact that Cruella has a dog? That's weird. Two dogs, a dog friend and a pet dog. That's weird. Yep. Yeah, Again. like the dogs were characters. Non-Dalmatian dogs were characters. And that's part of this, like, I don't know who this movie's for, where it doesn't mm-hmm. really seem like it's for kids. I don't think they would enjoy this. But we have, like, the silly animal sidekicks. I mean, honestly, the yeah. silly animal sidekicks were for me. I loved them. They didn't make any sense. But I thought they were great. 
The little one that dressed like a rat was my favorite part of the movie. That was funny as fuck. <laughs> His little that scheme. Was so good. Everything that dog did. I really care for Cruella's dog, whatever that one's name was. But Wink, I quite liked. Wink was a champ. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Also, also, not to be that guy, but how old like were those dogs? Because there's like a 10-year gap, right? But they're the same dogs. <sighs> That's true. So well, Maybe he starts as a puppy, so he's maybe like 11, which... Depending on the breed is still... You got years ahead I, of you. Well, it's not like, oh, I'm surprised it's alive, but like that dog was like spry as fuck. Like, it was puppy spry at the age of 11? Like, come on, dog. I mean, they probably... Let's be fair. The Cruella, like, we know, it, like, as people that have watched both movies, the original and this, the Cruella kills dogs to make coats. So maybe there have been multiple of all of these dogs... And then if we pay attention throughout the year, she gets more and more, like, brown dog-colored hats that she wears from time to time. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's the, that's Gen 1 dog. And then we're, we're looking at Gen 5 or Gen 6, you know? Maybe. Maybe every so often, she's like a vampire. She has to, like, feast on a new piece of dog clothing to keep her dog-killing <laughs> habits under wraps. <laughs> It's like the portrait of Dorian Gray, except instead yes. of a portrait of herself, it's dog-based clothing. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah, I don't know. The dog clothing part. The the, the fact that she had a dog was insane. I think I'd, I'd do a so cat funny. if she had a cat, because then that's the enemy of dogs or something, you yeah. know? And it would kind of match her personality sense. a little bit more. And cats are probably better at heists. Also, does that dog do anything in the entire movie except for like kind of help steal the necklace in that one scene and then fail at that? It like scrambles around a lot during like big action sequences, but not really. I don't think it does anything too significant. Like like Wink, the little dog, does oh, things yeah. on several occasions. A very useful dog. But the other dog, I don't think it like actually affects anything that happens in the movie. No, yeah, I think Wink could probably, right before the heist, go up to Cruella and be like, listen, I know you're the most important person here, but I'm pretty sure I'm the second most important person here, and we're <laughs> way more important than that guy. I think we should kill the tall one because he doesn't bring anything to the table. He's kind of whining about it. Uh, I, I, Yeah, I feel like the brown dog, if anything, causes a lot of trouble because he is a whole reason why everything, everything goes into motion, although... Hey, wait a second. If Mark yeah. Strong got his hands on Cruella in the beginning of the movie, would he have, like, given her a lollipop and taken her into a secret room? I mean, he did get his hands on her and was... I mean, he was just taking her out of the party. He didn't seem like he was really going to do anything to her. But, like, she escaped, you know? Yeah. Right. But, like, if he had gotten her, would he have... Could Would he have been like, I have a secret case to show you. You are actually secretly the daughter of what's her name? Because in that moment, you think he's a villain, but I I wonder if he's like, you gotta go. So, She's gonna kill your mom with dogs, and you probably shouldn't watch. So probably, probably before before watch. the dog based murder, he just <laughs> would have been like, hey, get out of here. She yeah. can't see you. Get out. And then after the dog based murder, if he found her, he would have been like, I mean, based on his later actions, he probably would have been like, listen, this has gotten real fucked up for me. <laughs> Yeah. Do something about this. Hey, wait a second. I got another question. Uh, yes. Does the Baroness know Corella's her daughter the whole time? I don't think so. Oh, great how? question. How does she not? Once she meets well, she Corella see- and she sees that hair, how does she not go, oh, that's the baby actually, I had? Actually, you know what? She suspects, but she doesn't know. There's okay. a specific scene after the first time, which doesn't make sense now, but makes sense, <laughs> you know, looking back at it later, <laughs> where she, like, looks at Mark Strong uh, the next day, and it's like, do you think that was? And he's like, oh, a lot of kids have that hairstyle these days. It's very popular. She's like, oh, very good. Actually, this is a good movie. Also, a lot of kids don't have that hairstyle. It's just her. It'd be well, yeah, cute if we saw more because he doesn't want her to know that he didn't do oh, the child true. murder she ordered. That's a good point. He's like the cronk of the mur- movie, baby murder. Yeah, I mean That's the cronk of the movie. He's the cronk. He's the henchman that actually doesn't do the murder. Oh, you know, he ends up on the side of the good guys at the very end. Yeah, he sets everything in motion, friend to the animals, that whole thing. His birthday, the whole secret, movie, or whatever. Secret hero of the movie. Yeah. Uh, 
I would say, I don't know. Did you guys have a favorite part of this movie? A part you genuinely like, besides the little dog that pretended to be a rat. That was terrific. Everything those two did <laughs> was my favorite part. Him and the 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 one that's the juggalo from Always Sunny and the rat dog. They their love affair. They kissed each other on the mouth. It was great. I honestly like very early when Estella is doing her um, like working in, in in the fashion store. She always wanted to be in thing. And those interactions and how the guy, like, wouldn't give her time of day. And even when she got, like, drunk and it's like, I'm trashing your window dis- display. Oh, like, I, the flea bag guy. Yeah, I thought all of that stuff was pretty good. <laughs> that I guy, man. Myself. I, he is he is the slimiest British par- person we've ever seen. <laughs> I would be shocked if he does not have some stoogy role in the next James Bond movie. Especially now that Phoebe Waller-Bridge is writing it. DJ, did you watch Fleabag? You know what I'm talking about? I, I have not. I, I, everyone says Fleabag's so good, but I've never watched it myself. Fleabag is so good. It's also like six episodes total. Yeah, it's super short, so I'd say it's worth a watch. But even if not for that part, but not for all of the funness of it, the first episode she goes out, or mm, first, yeah, first episode, right? She uh, remind uh, remind me what is happening here. She meets the guy that's the store owner in this on the bus and she's like hey you want to go on a date and he's the worst uh and he has like really weird teeth in the show but he's this guy in this he's just the guy that owns the you know department store in the uh in in cruella and he's just like the he's just like the new you know quintessential snooty british british type i want to say i'm trying to think i feel like i've seen him in a couple of things recently but uh i feel like he has a name like rat nose or something in uh in um the uh original um, whatever it's called in, in, um, Fleabag. Uh, his name is Jamie Demetrio. Oh, yeah, he's in Paddington, too. He's, he's one of the guys that's in, uh, in jail with Paddington. The best movie of all time, apparently. No longer the Not best movie anymore. of all time. Not anymore, yeah. DJ. Still what pretty good. It? I don't know I don't if know anything's... What it is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what has the new title, but they found an old negative review and added it to Rotten Tomatoes. What? It oh, is no longer the best here. movie of all time. And yes... Before you ask, it was written by Hugh Grant in a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. So this guy, they call him Bus Rodent in Fleabag. Anyway, he's the, he's he's the the evil shop man. Um, he's quite fun in that. But uh, but yeah. So he's in there. He's great. Um. Oh my God, you guys. There's just been some Bachelor news that has dropped. Just just now, like as just, we're recording. Just now. Uh, uh, seven nineteen Eastern, June second, twenty twenty one. That's right. Mark don't, your calendars, guys. Don't let guys. them know. Then they can find us. That's right. <laughs> uh, okay. So Chris Harrison, who has hosted oh. all six seasons of the dating yeah, shows, yeah. this is Bachelor in Paradise, apparently, but whatever, will not okay. return. Multiple sources confirmed to US right. Weekly. Right. Okay. Okay. Instead, celebrity guests will rotate as hosts throughout the season. All right. Sure. Sure. The first one is David Spade. Apparently, he is a big fan of the Bachelor franchise throughout the years. DJ, have you thrown your hat into this yet? Oh my God! Could I? Oh, let, can we start a campaign? I don't know how much. It might be a have, little but too late, like, but it's worth a shot. I mean, yeah, you've been or, or on just TV like now. Stuff. That's true. Wayne Brady's best friend, oh DJ my God, Chapman. Yeah. yeah. Wished me a happy marriage. That's right. It can he, only go well. Get him involved. Has it, has it been going well so far, or did it turn out that Wayne Brady actually cursed you? No, it's been great. Yeah, yeah. I I wish you would have said because like that that was like a gimme, you know, like you know, like good marriage. Like yeah, of course. But like I would have preferred a. I hope all of your movie going experiences are pleasant. Like that oh, would have been yeah. much more useful. Do than you think me, Wayne like, Brady's marriage. magics are powerful enough? He could have counteracted the witch's curse. I, uh, I mean, honestly, yes. Like, is that do, do I am I thinking too highly of Wayne Brady? One hundred percent. I'm just asking if you think that. Listen, I. I it's What's up? it's David Spade. It's the new, he's the one you have to beat right now. Do you think you yeah. could host a better Bachelor show than David Spade? Yeah, one hundred percent. Wow, America's own Joe I, Dirt. Yeah, I really do. Is that is that too much hubris? Is that like how like what was it like? Twelve uh, percent of Americans thought they could like beat up a bear, yeah, and like sixty-seven <laughs> thought they could beat up like a raccoon. Like, is is that like the, what's going on right now? Well, it's the first one, not the second one. I mean, I don't know. The raccoon well, numbers are actually probably pretty close. Some people stink, but I feel Apparent, like well, yeah. I feel like most of us could, could get a raccoon. Defeat any animal like <laughs> less fragile than a hummingbird. What about a dalmatian? Do you think you could get a dalmatian? Yeah, how do you, you think, think it would kick you are. off a cliff? I would have. 
I would have my shit ruined by a Dalmatian. Yeah, for sure. Those things are monsters. How about the bit where the Dalmatian, she steals the Dalmatians for, like, forever? How long did she have those Dalmatians for? It's not clear. That's another great question, yeah. Probably it feels like a couple weeks, at least. Ray, what's wrong with their poops? Yeah, it takes them a while to bounce that, that was necklace. insane. Yeah. Like, especially because here's the weirdest thing about the plan to me. Is that they're like, we Which have to plan? get... The plan? Okay, so at, halfway through the movie, for people that don't know, our, our heroes manage to steal... They... they it's kind of complicated, but I don't want to explain the whole movie because it's, yeah, it's not worth it. No, don't. But just, just... there's a magic locket kind of thing that... Yes. Well, it's not a locket. It's just like a jewel that... Or like a necklace that... Uh, might as well be a locket. <laughs> well, yeah, we don't know it's anything important yet, but it's some sort of piece of jewelry that uh, the Baroness wears around her neck that Cruella realizes is actually her mom's uh, old one so she's like oh I, I want that back so they hatch a plan to steal it which goes poorly and ends with one of the dalmatians that belongs to the baroness accidentally eating it now that's a question i had does the baroness know that the dog ate the jewel i don't know i, I can't remember i don't Unlike think most she of the does done recently i didn't hit stop and then record on this podcast mm. I, I think it's, it's been a, days i think it's something only corella sees based on her vantage point but either way okay um yeah. so I, then I have a follow-up question related to that yeah yeah how does cruella's mom get the necklace i think she's given uh, it by mark strong but that makes sense we see him give her cruella and the necklace isn't part of the deal. Know, maybe mail it to her. Don't think about it. Shut up. Don't be smart. I think it's... I, I I can assume it came from him. I don't know what his like long-term game is, but... Yeah, like, why would he do that also? Yeah, he's, point? Just, he's playing both sides. He just wants to come out on top. And uh, I mean, hey, I, he totally... I want a prequel movie about him. About yeah. yeah! This is his... This was actually not an act of charity, but his long game yeah. to set himself up with the next owner of Hellman House. That would be Which, amazing. Which, like, great job, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he yeah, absolutely listen, nailed he, it. He knows he's going to outlive Emma Thompson, and he needs to set himself up with that golden teat for the rest of his days. So, uh, steps need to be taken. That's the other thing with him. In the beginning of the movie, I just assumed she was, like, they were together and then it just seems like they're he's kind of her like butler he's alfred yeah yeah he's her major domo which is fine her what batman. is that what is her major domo uh basically means butler except it, it carries the implication that you also run the household oh okay cool yeah so like same that's... with batman also actually a term for a butler which is kind of funny when you think about it ah that is funny everyone's batman on that show uh, <laughs> one, you know, one there was could a, reasonably refer to Alfred as Batman's Batman. Do you know there's a villain, a Batman villain from the early days, whose name is Made of Woodman, and his whole deal <laughs> really? is his whole deal is he has a wooden baseball bat. It's a real guy. Wait, so he's not made of wood? Just his Batman? Just wow, his baseball bat is just his baseball bat, right? But he can't be called Batman because there's already Batman. So uh. I guess he had to work from. <laughs> Like, okay, well, what else is my deal? I guess that's w the wooden thing is kind of interesting. Let's go with that. Do you think he was planning to, like, emerge on the streets of Gotham, like, the day after <laughs> Batman started doing his yeah. thing? And he was like, yeah, I'm going to be the hot new criminal. Everyone's going to call me the Batman. Batman. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. And then the then the winged crime fighter <laughs> who dresses like a bat shows up. He's like, Fuck. God yeah, damn I, also, it. why is he Batman? That doesn't make any sense. I'd like He's to not actually a Batman. I'd like to believe that he uh, had the bat all set up, and then he was like, and then it was like Friday afternoon. And he was like, "All right, I'm gonna go knock over the Batman, like the Gotham Baseball Hall of Fame or something, and I'll be Batman forever." And then his wife was like, "But honey, we have to go to my parents' house this weekend." And he was like, "Uh, I had a thing." And she's like, "It's fine. You can go be Batman on Sunday." And then on Saturday, Batman shows up, and he's like, "Ah, oh, Maron or something. I don't know. He's Italian." Anyway, I can't believe that he was married to Harley Quinn. Also, <laughs> she, she, it's her mom or something. She has to have a mom. Everybody's got a. I don't know. Maybe. Speaking whoa, of moms... Whoa, wait a second, does Cruella have a mom? Does Cruella have a mom? She has two moms. One is not Bryce Dallas Howard, but she well, might as oh, well that's, be. 
That's who the that's who the first LGBTQ character in Disney is. <laughs> it's Cruella's two moms. Oh my god! <laughs> so we didn't John talk Disney. about this. So uh, the, the 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 LGBTQ one is it supposed to yeah. be knockoff David Bowie? It feels like it. I th- that's that's my best guess. That because there's is- not. I, as far as I can tell, there's not anyone like very quietly holding hands with a member of the same right. sex in the background of any scene. Like there was a point. So here's here's my problem with these movies. Now they tell me they have the first openly gay character in a movie or whatever, and then I start looking for him, and then I kind of imagine backstories that work for everyone, including my best guess was the two thieves. I, for a while, was like, oh, are they a thing? Is this going to be revealed? Because there's neither of them. I mean, one of them kind of seems to maybe half have a thing for Cruella, but he's clearly, his heart's not in it. And that's, I mean, we know that can't go anywhere, you know, based on lore and canon and stuff. So maybe they're together. But that's not the case either. It's just probably that one guy, um, which is a weird choice. I don't like it. Why? Because it's stupid. Because it's so <laughs> stupid. It should just be. It should just be nothing. Like, just make it a real character or don't. But also, like that guy isn't. There's nothing actually gay about that character or anything like that. There's no evidence in the movie. Yeah, it sounds like something that like a guy, like a studio head, who didn't really watch the movie but saw some pictures of some of the characters at some point was like. In an interview, and he was like, "Oh yeah, that one. First LGBTQ plus character in a Disney movie. Will you look at that?" And everybody was like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Oh, look at him, of course." And then that's as far as it ever went. Right. Um, which is, you know, that's about what you'd expect. Well, from... I'm on the IMDb, IMDb. That's the that's it trivia page right now, and it turns out that they actually did uh, cut a just like graphic hardcore section <laughs> between him and Horace. So, oh, Horus. Yeah. Not yeah, what Horace. I would have expected, but I let that see that's what we needed. That is what we needed. I was told this character a lot of um the person I was watching was she was calling him Noah Fielding. Did you did, did you recognize <laughs> this uh comparison? I clearly did. Yeah, so from the Mighty Boosh and like a bunch of other stuff. One of those British guys that kind of pops into a lot of stuff. He's funny. Um but it was not him apparently, it was somebody else. Might as well have been him. Yeah, no, no, I knew it wasn't him, but just calling him that is yeah. it's like me calling him Dime Store David Bowie. It's a funny yeah, comparison. It's a good one. Um What other dumb stuff happens in this movie? <laughs> what other dumb stuff does happen in this movie? I mean we covered a lot of the dumb stuff. I mean, um, yeah. The mom kicked by the dog, that's pretty great. How well, about we were the... just we were just circling the drain of Corella's two mommies. Yeah, so Corella's two moms. So we learn so first we have this thing where Cruella sees as a child her first her mom mom as far as she knows uh get kicked off of the lunch by some dogs and uh and she's talking to a hooded figure or whatever some someone in shadow and then later we see that from Cruella's perspective with stunning detail now she re remembers it and she knows now that it was not only was it Emma Thompson. But she was po- like holding a little dog whistle and pointing to the dogs to kill um, the mom, the the first mom. So it's like, oh, she killed my mom, and we never really know why. But who cares? Because she like confronted it, her about some kind of money thing. I yeah, think? we we got some hints like at the start. You never hear like how like what she's blackmailing her with. But she's right. kind of saying, like, hey, I know something about you, and I will not say a word about it. Just please give us some money. We desperately need money. Yeah. Um, uh, hey, not Bryce Dallas Howard. Don't stand at the, uh, like, precipice of a huge cliff if yeah. you know that someone's, like, kind of evil. This is, like, blackmail 101. Do never never stand somewhere where you could be easily murdered by Dalmatians when blackmailing them. <laughs> How many people do you think the Baroness has done this to? Because it's her go-to. You know? Yeah, the dogs were like ready to go. I mean, it's explicitly later when Cruella's like, "You killed my mom." She's like, "What? Could you narrow it down?" That's, yeah, that could yeah, be a right. lot of people. So apparently, she's done a lot of murders. Also, Cruella's mom just while the Baroness is like blowing on a whistle, uh, standing there pointing directly at her, and across the entirety of her massive estate. 
These <laughs> dogs are run, like full in view, barking the whole time, drawing attention to themselves, running for like at least a minute towards her, these Dalmatians. Doesn't make a single move to not be next to this cliff the whole time. Yeah. Right? When you first saw it, did you think they were going to rip her to shreds with their mouths? Like, or did you no, think I, they were going to knock her over the cliff? I had been spoiled about this, so I knew ah. it was going to happen. And that's a bummer. Because in the moment, it kind of, you, you see it and you're like, well, there's no way that they're going to knock her over the cliff. But they're also, they're not going to viciously rip this mom in half, but maybe they will. But they don't. This movie is cowardly. They're all cowards. Um but then we learn – so that – in the beginning of the movie, you're kind of like, oh, is that why she hates Dalmatians? Is that – she harbors a grudge for the rest I of mean, her life that they killed her what, mom? That's what the movie wants you to think. Yeah. For sure. And uh, that make, makes as much sense as anything. But um, then later on, the Baroness gets lots and lots of revenge and just tries to kill Cruella by lighting her on fire. Pretty solid plan. I mean, actually, it sucks, but it almost works. Uh, when is she trying to like... Oh, yeah, she's, like, got her in the house, and she's like, yeah, we're gonna gas this place up. Yeah. Yeah, that was unfortunate. But then... I have to, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, so, like, a real quick thing. So, during the course of the movie, it's, like, Estella versus Cruella. Like, we already talked about this, blah, 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 split personality, be consistent. But, like, when she becomes Cruella, like, she's playing that character all the time, in, like, at home, quote-unquote, and she's mean. Like, she's just mean to Horace and Jasper. Like, yeah. str- straight up mean. And then after she almost dies, but is saved by Mark Strong, who uh, lives up to his name, because he must have been quite strong to get her out of the burning building and to, you know, like, wherever he got her. So, you know, good, good, good on you, buddy. Um, and then she, like, kind of turns around. She's like, I won't be so mean anymore. It's interesting that, like, the movie, in the middle of the movie, turns her into the character who would have existed at the end of the movie and doesn't end with her being comically bad, but ends with her being like a more nuanced character. I thought that was an interesting choice. Yeah. The movie took, right? Oh yeah. It's super weird that it goes from crew at one point in the movie. She is Cruella DeVille. And then by the end of the movie, she's not Cruella DeVille. Yeah, exactly. It's it's, it's, eh, bizarre. Anyway. Um, yeah. Mark, Mark strong saves her from burning building. Hooray. Yeah. But then, what does he tell her? Uh, y- your mommy is evil baroness. Uh, aren't you surprised? And, like, that's pretty surprising, honestly, considering everything that's happened so far. I mean, learning your the person who you thought was your mom is not actually your birth mother is probably pretty insane. I mean, yeah, for sure. It doesn't really, like, I, I feel like the weird part of it, at this point in the movie, and this is where the movie starts feeling along, you're like, does that change anything she still like, wants yeah. to kill her right she still killed the person she thinks is her mom this is pretty much the same movie i guess it adds more fuel to the fire for how this person is the fucking worst like i i guess there's that yeah that she tried to have a baby murdered i guess but she also yeah also it fair. sets it up that cruella will be able to inherit all the riches yes. so that she'll be a rich person like she is in the movie even though but- in every other respect we are not setting her up in a place where she will be the Cruella from the original movie. Yeah. And also the way the movie ends is that she could have been the person she was and inherited all the money. Right? It's so weird. Spoiler, she kills the Baroness and's like, and I leave all of my holdings to Cruella. And no, it's like, cool, you didn't no. need to be your daughter to do that. DJ, she yeah. doesn't kill the Baroness. That's true. Oh, whatever. Sends the Baroness to jail, whatever. She frames, not frames, because she doesn't, like, but she implicates the Baroness in the murder of right. Estella, a character who's dead. Estella, who it is important that she is the daughter of the Baron because that's how she inherits everything. Because as the daughter of the Baron, she's the one who should have inherited all his stuff, not his wife. Because that's how the inheritance of noble titles work. Okay. Is that how it works? I mean, I'm sure these days it would probably go to the spouse instead. So but technically, yeah, involved, like, like like a spouse n- cannot inherit a noble title. Like, ah. uh, if he was actually a peer that is a member of the British gentry, then his title would pass on to his children, not his spouse. Right. That makes sense. Uh, but also, like, who gives a fuck? Yeah, who gives a fuck? I mean, sure. 
yes, they they did the right thing. DJ's wrong. Well, but the other question that I have when I watched it, he's like, it's like, oh, they, uh, it's it's uh, she willed all her money from Estrella to Cruella. I'm like, well, who the fuck is that? What also, did she get a birth certificate? Think, doesn't the world think Cruella is dead at this point? Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah, Cruella like, where doesn't did you find exist. A lawyer? Where did you find a lawyer to draw up a will for you to leave all your stuff to a person to a who doesn't person. exist that everyone thinks is dead? Yeah. Like, I assume at this will signing or whatever, they both had to sign it, right? So I wonder if, like, maybe they didn't. But it'd be funny if it was like, all right, I, Estella, of Sound Mind and Buddy, here bequeath all of my assets that I'm just, you know, maybe I have them, who knows, to Cruella, and then everybody was like, okay, and then they all like turned around for half an hour and faced in the other direction while she got into her Cruella outfit and then came in and it's like, it's me, Cruella, I'm here to take all the stuff. We never see them in the same place at the same time. Yes, mm. yes, except we do right after the murder, so it can't be her. Also, also, why, why couldn't she just have done it so that the Baroness murdered Cruella and then... She pops up as Estella, and so she doesn't have to do any weird legal shenanigans. She just is Estella and gets to have everything. Yeah, and then in the next movie... That was movie, my overall point. Yeah, thank you, Diggins. You're so smart. And Otherwise. then in the next movie, a different Cruella shows up, and it's like, Cruella's dead. And it's like, well, I, yes, but also, she didn't oh, exist. I'm Cruella. Perfect. And then it's like, no, copycat Cruella is the real villain. Something like that. But that should have been this mid credit scene. And the copycat oh my God, Cruella guys... should be Glenn Close. Yes! Okay, so she wasn't in this, right? I was just, I was wondering about that, too. I don't think she's on the IMDb, and I also didn't see her, but she wasn't, like, one of the fake Cruellas at the party at the end, right? I don't think so. The fuck is wrong with them? Why even bother? Put her in there, you guys. She was amazing in that movie as a child. I remember loving it, and... I mean, caring about it. Not her as a it. child. Nando as a child, right? Me as a child. And her probably as, also as a child. She would probably couldn't have believed how good of a job she would have done as Cruella DeVille. She probably watched that and was like, I'm that. That's me someday in the future. I'm imagining Glenn Close as a child playing Cruella DeVille. And I'm like, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. My good is this. That'd be so funny, actually. They like dress it. Because I'd love to see the four. And if you're like the like the one to three. Of just Cruella DeVille, baby Cruella mm-hmm. DeVille discovering fashion, you know? It'd be fun. Um, riding one of the Dalmatians around the house. Here's the question. Let's get to the last thing b- b- about this movie that's weird. We haven't even talked yeah. about this at all. Uh, and I think it might be the weirdest thing about The thing that kept me going, wait a second, what? During okay. the movie. You want to take a guess what it was? Oh, I can't even, I can't even wager a guess. Hmm. Was it the appearance of Anita and Roger throughout the movie for no reason? Yes. It was 100% okay. that. I kept okay. the whole movie going like, wait, is this from the other one? And then I was like, is she supposed to be that one? Wait, do they know each other? Wait, have they met before? Does Cruella know both of them? And then, Well, the answer is yes, right? She so does you're asking about eventually. In the yeah, in, in the, the original. In the original, she is an old schoolmate of Anita's. That's how they know each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. She only knows Roger through Anita. They did not meet beforehand. So she is not oh, so his lawyer. the whole lawyer. lawyer stuff's bullshit. Oh, yeah, that is all bullshit. Or the He's lawyer. never a lawyer at all. He's just a songwriter. Oh. Maybe he quits the law. Does he this, quit the law this is, in this movie to be a songwriter? This is, this is setting up a new 101 Dalmatians movie. Like, 100%. I know you guys call me crazy, but it, no, it I, is. No, I think it. I think it is. It's just not setting up anything resembling the original movie when it comes to Cruella. So the whole setup part of this movie is setting up, like, the Earth 2 version of Cruella de Vil, where it's like, what if Cruella de Vil was the good yeah. guy? And that doesn't make any sense, but... Because, <laughs> like, who's the villain in your new 101 Dalmatians movie? Right, because, okay, so yeah, so we get Roger as the lawyer, and he's, like, kind of a, you know, not as tough and type A as Cruella, so he just, like, doesn't really have too much to do. And then Anita is a journalist... Some sort of gossip columnist? Yeah, like tabloid columnist. She seems deal, to work yeah. for some kind of, like, gossipy fashion magazine or something. Or fashion newspaper, specifically. Here's a question. Yeah. In the old cartoon, were her and Quill the same age? No, 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 it, no, no, no. I mean, so, it, they are old, like, they are specifically old schoolmates. Oh, Okay. Um, that is said in the original movie. So I guess they were supposed to be, but they certainly don't look it. Yeah. 
You could be old schoolmates and be like. Mm. It's true. Maybe maybe Cruella's one of those like fifty year olds that went back to college. You know. <laughs> I'm gonna get my degree in fashion. Oh boy, hot dog. <laughs> that's, that's how she sounded when she said it. Uh, it, it but it was kind of, okay. So if she does this. So we learn. Not only do we learn that she knows both of them, they don't seem to yeah. know each other throughout the course of the movie. They don't have a meet cute, do they? No. Okay. The, Anita and Roger. Anita and Pongo are the meet cute. No, no, no. I know, but I'm saying in this movie, there's no bit no, where it's no, like, no, no, no. "Hey, aren't you?" Oh, yeah, I know her too. Um. So yeah, Perdita and Pongo. So at the end of the movie, we learn that uh, uh, Cruella inherits the three murder dogs that she does command. Without a whistle or anything, just by saying... No, she has the whistle at the end. Remember, she yeah. stole it from the Baroness. But she doesn't blow it when she makes the dog stop. She just, like, points at the ground it. and is like... She was she was blowing it. That's how she got their attention and uh, how the Baroness okay. knew where to find her. So she's not blowing right. it at the second she tells them to stop, but she was blowing it, so I don't know. I don't know how this... I don't know how these Dalmatians determine who is their master. Maybe the Dalmatians really don't want to do a murder. And if you show the slightest bit of like, no, they don't do it. And it's just that Cruella's mom was like, yeah, I guess I'm going to get murdered by Dalmatians. And they <laughs> and were Cruella's like, I guess you are. Had, yeah, she displayed not the slightest <laughs> bit of resistance despite yeah. the ample time she had to prevent this. But uh, but yeah, so Cruella inherits the Dalmatians from uh, from the Baroness, all three of them, which... Weird number, kind of, because it's not like a mommy and daddy. It's like yeah. just three. Uh, One's hanging. The yeah. Dalmatian polycule. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Pride Month, all the Dalmatians. Um, <laughs> That's the first LGBTQ <laughs> character. Yeah. Say, it's the Dalmatian polycule. So the Dalmatians, one of them, I want to say the, the Horus is like, this one's getting fat. And you're like, oh, okay, it's going to have a baby. So later at the end of the movie, very, very end, uh, Anita and Roger both get a puppy, a Dalmatian puppy named already for them. Thanks, uh, on their doorstep, <laughs> like a little orphan baby from Cruella. And I assume this is step one of her master plan to breed enough dogs for a coat. <laughs> I guess <laughs> it's the only way this oh, makes anywhere near a lick of sense. Ah, uh, yes, oh. I will separate these dogs in the hope that they one day meet and breed so much. Yeah. Like, I, I, I kind of want to believe she, so, like, there's, like, a litter, maybe, like, it had, like, three puppies. Mm -hmm. And she, the first two were had, and she immediately sent Horace and whatever the other one's name is out with each of them. Was like, deliver these to these two people. I'll birth the third. And then she birthed the third and was like, oh, my God, this fur is amazing. Fuck! Bring them back! Bring them back! But it was too late, so then she was like, I got another round of puppies for my coat. But that's as that's as bad as much as I'll take. Uh, because, yeah, yeah. Pongo and Perdita are uh, from Cruella. They're originally Cruella's dogs. They don't recognize her in the cartoon, I assume, but oh, I guess yeah, maybe no, they were well, babies. They're, no, they're, they're, like, mean. They're like, her. Yeah. Yeah, they don't like her. They, another yeah. thing, uh... So the very last thing is Roger gets Pongo, uh, and then he starts playing the piano, and he invents the Cruella yeah, Deville song, correct. which correct. so in the original was already kind of like unusually mean of him. Yeah, he wrote this super sick burn song about his wife's friend, but at least she is like she's like really mean to him. So at yeah. least there's animosity yeah. there. Here. She's just, like, some fashion designer woman who pissed off his ex-boss, who was actually the one who's been super cruel to him the whole time. Why is he writing the Cruella song and not the Baroness song? Yeah. God, you're right. And also, that all is true. Um, what was I going to say? I forget. Also, does he... So, Pongo and Perdita yes. are siblings. Yes. Wait. Wait. Oh God, right? <laughs> Wait. Hold right? on. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> Did they know that? Is that why they meet and they're like, oh, my God, my brother. I didn't even well, know. Well, Nando, in the movie, they go on to have 15 puppies. So I really hope that's not what they I mean, thought. Yeah, that's I how, didn't even think about that. That's how dogs work, right? They, like, 
pure breed the shit out of dogs. So they like can't Usually breed and not stuff. With their own siblings. Yeah, that's not. I mean, yeah, it's you It's more, and it's more just like are very different. Yeah, it's more like for purebreds, you're just you're limiting the genetic pool of like right. traits they can have so much that they develop complications. Not that they're literally having children with their siblings. Yeah. Do you think maybe that was it then? Corella was like, this will fuck with the Dalmatians. Like an old boy situation, real long play, like, you're actually siblings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, like, this is her, this is her long-term yeah. revenge plan for the Dalmatians mm. killing her mom? Mm-hmm. It's your best I got. Are, your children Damn. are going to be incestuous. <laughs> yeah. So, so at the end of the movie, so at the end of the next movie, this Pongo, like, finds an an old woman in the snow in Korea who will erase his memory and cut out his tongue. That's exactly so that it. He doesn't know that he slept with his sister. I think that's all I'll take. That's it. That like I don't want to say the first one was a little derivative of Emily and Paris and um you know Devil Wears Prada and that made it bad. But if we want a really co derivative in an interesting way, yeah, let's take some like whatever it is, Korean horror revenge movies and base a Disney princess origin villain thing around that. And that's like way cooler. Um, At least it would be different. But yeah, so that's really weird. That's insane. It's super insane. Like at no point is Roger and, and Anita ever like, oh yeah, this is, by the way, I got this from Cruella. Really? Yeah, right. I like, make also, the connection. Yeah. where'd you get this Dalmatian? That's super weird. Yeah, no. I, did you guys want... I wanted her to kill the dogs to make the code. I wanted her to, like, go over the edge. Yeah, no, because it would have been interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the whole thing, right? Like, that's who Corella <laughs> is. She's the person who murders dogs to make fashion. Yeah. Uh, I, I really... Of fa- oh, yeah? I'm sorry. I was just going to say, uh, speaking of fashion... Um, I don't know. Did you guys think like the fashion bits they did was cool? The bit with the bit with the moth dress was kind of cool. That was interesting. Know, I visually that interesting. Was cool. I was like, how about I, when the guy delivered him? I was like, what the fuck? How is this part of a plant? I know. Yeah. I know. I'm like, oh, I got yeah, that, that. So the like reveal, that was clever. It, it was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'd say my favorite fashion bit that she was able to to fashion herself a parachute just under Love her skirt. It. I said that uh-huh. right as she was getting pushed off. I like, she's got a fucking parachute. And I think it's because they did the exact same thing in that fucking Sherlock Holmes movie. You remember that? Oh, yeah, probably, The one that's yeah. like Game of Thrones, the Shadows or whatever, Shadow of Thrones. Yeah. I don't remember. Some, something like that. Where they uh, he gets pushed off the thing at the end of the main one with uh, I mean, Moriarty. falls off Reichenbach Falls. It is Reichenbach Falls. Okay, yeah. I, I The name was in my head, but I was like, man... So much bullshit. I, I kind of I, I smushed all the Sherlock stuff together because boy, two thousand nine we had Sherlock fever, and uh, it was a mistake probably. But the um the yeah she, I want to say we learned that he survived by also building an improvised parachute. So pretty good. It's a good way to survive being pushed off a cliff. Yeah, for real. Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't know. It's good for her. I guess I'm proud of Cruella. <laughs> D- did you have I, I just, another fam- when, favorite fashion crime? I'm trying to think of other fa- fashion crimes she did. I mean, the, the the thing where, um, like, with the garbage truck and, like, her dresses with the train was so long. It's like, that was kind of cool. Yeah, garbage truck was fun. Did she dump real garbage on the on the cars? Or if it was just the dresses? I'm not was sure. it just the dress? Maybe. Yeah, could have been, like, a like a bustle or, like, an attachment under the dress or yeah. something. Like, just, just that you'd take off. Uh, yeah. I did like her weird little spray paint mask. I don't know why. The I, future. Yeah, I liked all the dumb bullshit in the middle. I really did. I think I could have seen that movie. It really did feel like a a Gotham City fashion obsessed supervillain. Like I like I can't think of one off the top of my head that fits that bill. But if that one existed, that's that's about what they do. If Penguin existed, he would do most of those things. Except instead of a dump truck, it would be a big penguin or something. You know. That's like about right, right, right. About the, about the level of showmanship and like commitment to the bit. So yeah, I respect that. Uh, what respect hap- the game, respect the game, respect game, respect game recognizes game as Penguin game would say. Game, Not me, baby. but Penguin. Uh, how about this last question? Okay. Uh, unless anybody has anything else to say about this movie, uh, what do you think about the music? I, there was a million songs. I, yep. 
It, apparently, they spent a fuck ton of money on the music. It must have. Like, they had a Beatles song in there. Uh, and it was a cover, which is also a little weird, but, you know, whatever. It's still the Beatles. At oh, the yeah, beginning of the movie, we have a montage of all the times Cruella gets in trouble at her school as a child. And one of them is that she catches a ball in dodgeball and then throws it at another kid. In other words, she plays dodgeball. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, but she does it with bad bad intentions, Dickens. That's great. She'll be the villain in the Dodgeball sequel. It'll she, be it'll she, be recontextualized that she actually kills people with dodgeballs, but she just didn't in this movie because it would make her <laughs> unlikable. Uh it's so funny. So my my other question then is let's assume this made enough money not to justify a sequel, but to justify that they shouldn't stop doing this, which they probably should, but I don't know. Tell them tell them to do with their money. Uh, is there one of these that would actually be interesting to you? A Disney sequel or, or even like minor character backstory movie? I would That's love true. to see the Frollo and Governor Ratcliffe ones just to see how much they would tie themselves in knots to make those characters sympathetic without being insanely <laughs> racist. <laughs> Governor Ratcliffe, is he the one from, from, um, from Pocahontas? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that would be, that'd be a real wild one. Maybe it would turn out John Smith was the villain the whole time. We could get Mel Gibson hey. to play him in this, too, you know? <laughs> yeah, wouldn't even need to change casting. Yeah, just, like, age him up a little bit. Make it make it way after the whole Pocahontas. It's just, like, dead by, like, 25 or something. So, like, in their 60s, they're both sitting around, yeah. you know, fired. And like, she, you know what the crazy shit we did was? And then they talk about also, it. Also, like, when John Smith and Pocahontas met, he was, like, in his 40s and she was, like, 14. Yeah. At least they weren't related, right? But maybe in the in the Disney remake, we will learn. I don't know how, but we'll find that out. I don't know. What about you, DJ? Do you have one that you think would be fun? Yeah, give me give me the Clayton uh, from Tarzan backstory. I feel like Clayton probably has a pretty sympathetic backstory. If hunting I mean, is something you're cool with, yeah, it's give me just like him as this a kid, movie. Like gorillas knocked his mom off a cliff when he was. <laughs> I mean, at least they can knock people off cliffs and stuff, you know? His parachute doesn't open and he accidentally strangles to death when he falls in and is hung. It's a pretty metal death. Oh, that would be fucking sick. Yeah, that if he's like, Tarzan death's his, messed up. Yeah. His dad dies the same way. It's like, oh, that's got to be the worst way to get The doctor's telling him it's like, it's it's honestly one of one of the worst ways you could die. I, uh, I wouldn't wish this on anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, real subversive. Go for the comedy. We want comedy. I mean, I think... I'm trying to think of like one that's actually fun. Because we already did a bunch of them. We already did Jafar. We already did Gaston, kind of. And the live action ones. And they both stink. Mm-hmm. Um, not like stink, but they're not anything super interesting. Like, I, obviously I would love like Yzma or one of them. But I, I feel like there's probably another one that would be really fun to watch scar on the come up let's try this lion king again oh my god uh, yeah like them and daddy uh, mufasa and see what's going on there well you could do that for sure actually if you like committed to making mufasa the bad guy make a movie where scar is like just the champion of the hyenas the oppressed minority of the jungle or something and then it's like that's actually that's actually pretty good yeah like that's that there's a movie there that would just uh he, he's he's kind of a little too uh, a little too evil. He's he, killing Mufasa in front of his little son is too much. Although, he, you know, he did push somebody off a cliff, so maybe he is the bad guy. That's true. We're really getting back to cliff. Dizzy loves cliffs. I like cliffs. Yeah. How how many characters have died from falling off a thing? You got Frollo. You got mm-hmm. you got uh, Gaston. Yep. You got uh, Kerchex. Scar, or Clayton like or whatever said. his name is. Scar. Yeah, Scar dies by hanging to death, never mind. Because he survives the fall and that's killed. Gets killed yeah, that's hanging. true. Scar gets eaten. Uh, um, uh, Ursula does not. Jafar does not. Um, Dr. Facilier does not. Dr. Facilier gets dragged uh, to hell. Uh, uh, <laughs> best death. Second best death compared to Ursula, who gets hit with the ship, gets struck by lightning, and explodes. That's yeah, the best that's one. Cool. I want to do a live action Ursula just so we can get that scene. Um... That could be the first Disney open LGBTQ character. Who, Flotsam? <laughs> when he says, like, I'm going to go home to my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Not Jetsam, another one. 
an eel we haven't named and never will. Now buy my merchandise. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like I, there's got to be more Disney villains. I don't know. It's like Hans doesn't die in Frozen. None of the Frozen ones die. Tangled, does she die? I don't remember. The she does. That. Oh, she falls. Yeah, she falls from the tower. There you go. The Emperor uh, she for gets killed considering by that him a Disney villain. Or whatever. That, that, that chameleon fucking Pascal. Officer. Oh. Pascal fucking officer. Um, That's pretty good. I'm trying to think of like the early ones, like um, Hercules. How does Hades die? He just gets like uh, he gets punched he off gets of the cliff into, hell. into the hell pool. Yeah, so it's yeah. like both. Um, yeah, because he does uh, you know get what? a big swift uppercut to the chin. Which... I want the Hans movie. Hans, what's he from? Oh, like from Frozen, the... Prince Hans. Oh, oh, okay. How does he? Does he die? Oh, you just want a guy growing up with lots of brothers, like like yeah. Shameless, <laughs> just like there's too many kids in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty good. I'll take if we're taking minor characters that I'd want to see a little bit more from. I'd love to see uh, a movie set in the Sugar Rush universe that's just about the one Mindy Ooh. Kaling is. That's like a shitty like little racer kid because yeah, i did yeah. watch that recently and the racing holds up it's pretty cool looking and it's also like kind of a fun aesthetic and there's just so many of them and we don't know what any of them do except for one of them's named candlehead so like i could see that and then like king candy he's kind of fun one of the hot do- one of the uh one of the um donut policemen is adam carolla so that'd be a lot of fun he could be the bad guy in that that or I want to see a movie about the horse from Tangled. He's not the bad guy. I know he's not the bad guy. But I'd love to see War Horse, but where the horse kills everyone in war. Like, he is the <laughs> hero of the war. Um, because that's his deal. He, like, sword fights with his mouth. So, like, that'd be kind of cool. I don't know. The answer is we'll get every single one we've named and several more in the next couple of years. Yeah. Because Disney's got the money machine and it is set to print. Uh Speaking of print, you guys, you want to talk about some things uh, you might recommend to the fine people? Some in print, some not? Some yeah, kind of classic segment? To. Yeah, let's hit the classic segment up. DJ, got anything to recommend? I do. Um, so first one's like a, feels like a slam dunk. I started watching the MODOK show on Hulu. Oh, yeah. It's phenomenal. How far did you get? It is, I'm only three episodes in. Oh, um, okay. Four is my favorite. So that's the uh, oh, okay. yeah, the yeah, best yeah, one I, coming up. I think that's kind of been widely decided to be the best of them. Although, like I said, the one with Arcade is very fun. But 4 is, like, the the best. It's also funny to me as an animated show. um, You know, you hear, like, voice actors and, you know, who's that guy? Oh, yeah. Um, I feel like so many of the voice actors in this show have been repurposed from BoJack Horseman. There's a good amount. Uh, Patton Oswalt, Ben Schwartz. um, There's at least one more. Come on, brain. I don't watch BoJack Horseman, but I want to say Wendy Mc... The one that plays the evil scientist lady, she's probably in there, right? Yes, yeah. Monica? So, so, yeah. Mm-hmm, the one good. from Reno 911. The Reno 911. Yeah. Oh, also the guy who plays the guy who got his arm blown off. Yeah, Sam Richardson. I lo- He's my favorite. Yeah. He's going to fucking he's... get Bart Hartley Jarvis one of these days. It's going to be amazing. Could, uh, could you guess who my favorite character in that show is? I mean, I would have said Sam Richardson, but since he hasn't come up, I'm going to go. Second favorite. Uh, Modoc. No, one looks good, but you never want the main character. Favorite f- favorite character. I'm trying to think of like in the first three episodes who gets a lot of play. It's probably not Iron Man. He's pretty good. It, it's not even like the a lot of play, but like the play they do get. I've just I found the is I it, found this character's bit to be hilarious. Is it the super adaptoid? I fucking love the super. Yeah, he's, he's fun. Um. <laughs> Like, I, I think how they're using him is so clever. And, like, I, I like that kind of character who, like, is cool but gets dumped on. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love what they're doing with the super adaptoid. He's a fun one. That's, uh, I want to say it's John Daly. Uh, okay. Probably another Bojack Horseman. And then the other one, Beck Bennett, I think is pretty good. As the yes, smarmy I, boss I like guy. Yeah, I him a lot. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, like, when they go back to see him as a kid, that's, like, so great, too. It's like, oh, vertical integration. I'm just, oh, I, yeah. I love it's anyway, a- this show's great. I should watch. It's on Hulu. Um, yeah, I wasn't ready for how good that show to be. And I, I, Michelle and I are watching, and she has no idea who Modoc is. Like, has never heard of Modoc before. And I'm did like, you do you decide, like still find? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did, did, did you? Did, did, did you? Wow. Mm. <laughs> My brain doesn't function. Remix podcast. 
did you tell her that he's the the mental organism designed only for killing? I did mention that he's the mental organism designed only for killing. Um, I want to say that's like line five of it's the show. Like the first line of the show. Yeah, it comes up real quick. That doesn't make any difference it's still like well what the yeah. fuck is the rest of this and his little introduction is like he's a kid with the big head and his mom's like they'll appreciate your big head one day and i'm like that's not how it worked in the comics yeah. which is fine but also it's like wait is this just the natural end game of his big head but i don't i want to say i'm trying to remember if we actually see him without the big helmet on without like the doomsday chair i don't know if we ever do but, like, there's a couple times in the comics where we've seen him without the chair, and it doesn't make sense. His body is – it's because his head is so big, but his arms are set apart. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, it's not like he's yeah. got a big head and a tiny body because otherwise the hands would be really close to each other, but they're not. So, yeah, he's 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 fun. Um, well, so, so I asked her, like, are you still, like, enjoying this without, like, any of that knowledge? She's like, yeah, it's funny. So you don't have to know who Modok is to enjoy the show, um, at least based off of my one sample size uh, for, for, for asking someone who has seen the show. So, um, yeah, g- give it a shot. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's great. So there's that. And then I'm going to recommend another board game because it's board game summer. And this game I'm going to recommend is called The King's Dilemma. Have either of you heard uh... of this game? Yes, I really want to play this. I have not. It's, it's you so cut good. babies in half? Yep, uh, exactly. I haven't, <laughs> haven't gotten to that uh. scenario, but the way this game works, it could exist. Um, so the way this game works, and uh, you know, you know, tickets. May, maybe like once I'm done with this campaign, like I, I wonder how much replayability this game has. Like, I mean, it's a legacy game, and I'll explain. You literally would have to buy a new copy, but uh, oh, it might be down to clown. Um, but the way this game works is um, it's probably the closest you could ever get to, like, a Game of Thrones board game. But basically, um, you play a, like, house representative. So, like, think Game of Thrones, right? You're um, you're a Stark or you're a, uh, a Lannister or, you know, like, you're, you're playing your house representative. And you're on the king's council and you basically work for a king who you make all of the decisions for. Like, there's a king, but he's, like, a figurehead. Like, you are making all the decisions as part of the king's council. And depending on the scenarios on uh, how you vote, it's like a game of, like, political poker. So you vote eyes and nay, you, you vote I and nay, and you bet with what's called power, and you can accumulate power, interestingly enough, by not voting. Like, you have to sit out a voting round if you want to get more power. Um, mm. And what you do is, b- based on how you vote and how everyone else at the table votes, uh, there are certain outcomes, and then those have replication. Re- um, repercussions for your kingdom and thus your house because the houses have different goals as they would in any kind of um feudal political system so what's interesting about the game is you all kind of start on a level playing field but as the game progresses if you're not doing as well as some of the other houses you have certain uh incentives to like see the kingdom not do as well and it's very interesting for like how that shit plays out um so yeah it's a it's a very fun game to play i make awful decisions so i'll give an example uh you could get a role that's the moderator and basically you break ties so i had told i was actually it was funny it was with michelle i had told her hey if you put up enough power to tie this vote i will vote in your favor like i will break the tie in your favor um and she did and then i went to the other guy hey what will you pay me to break it in your favor and it's just like the the shit that goes on in this game is my god yes. can you be like i don't want to vote in anyone's favor i want to maintain the uh the sanctity of the filibuster in the court of whatever <laughs> his name is king uh, no, you- king mansion the <laughs> third <laughs> uh you, you have to if you are the moderator you have to break the tie in either the affirmative or the negative. You cannot uh, abstain if you're the moderator. Right. Um, you could not be the moderator and you could abstain, but uh, it's it's a heavy price to, to, to pay being the moderator. Interestingly, uh, if you're the moderator and everyone abstains from the vote, you pick the outcome of the vote and you have to take the repercussions for the vote. So there's like a mechanic where depending on how the vote turns out, there's repercussions and someone has to take the blame. And it's the person who like voted the most power in the side that won. Ah, so it's very, it's, it's, it's a, it's a ton of fun. It's, it's a fun. legacy game. So you, you, you play it once and it's done. But like, like I wonder, like, could I like play the game again? Cause the way it works is that there's such a branching story narrative that I, I could see if one, vote went a different way it could change the downstream effects like the butterfly effect would be crazy 
So I would be curious to see, like, if I could um, play, like, play it, play it again. Because I, 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 I'd love to just like do another scenario, kind of, like, kind of like D and D, where you have like different campaigns of D and D. So um, this is a game. So it came out in like, <laughs> it came out in like early 2020. I think like February of 2020. I bought this game and set up the campaign in like March of 2020 and we never got together and we're playing it now. And it's just been, I was worried like, Oh, like after all this time would I still care, but no, it's, it's been amazing. So yeah, dig It's like, if you could find a group of people to play with, it's, it's so worth it. It's such a fun game. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. Anyone out there. Get, oh, I should say one more thing too. The game supports three to five people. I would only play it with four to five people. I worry that if it were only three people, you would not get as much out of the game. Um, because I think it would probably just be a lot of two verse ones. Where at least with four people, it probably shakes it up a little bit more. So I would say five is probably the best. You have to do it with at least four. Cool. And, uh, so yeah, wait, what's so this called? The, the King's Dilemma. Ah, interesting. Uh, so. Cool. Cool. All right, Diggins, do you have anything to recommend to the fine people? I do indeed. Uh, This past week, I watched a movie, a movie that came out this year, actually, uh, that I really, really enjoyed, uh, and I would definitely heartily recommend to the fine people. Oh. Uh, So, uh, this movie is about, uh, I'm going to withhold the title for a bit, because the title tells you a lot about what kind of movie this is. Is it called Cruella? It tells you the movie about a character that vaguely resembles from a distance, but is very much not Cruella de Vil. Oh, also, we didn't talk about this. She names herself after a car. Go on. (laughs) (laughs) She does, in fact, name herself after the Coupe de Vil that she drives in the movie. Um, No, it's a... So, it's a movie about uh, these two kids who, while playing in their backyard, find... a a strange device buried there that turns out to be uh, the the prison for an intergalactic warlord Uh, who almost destroyed the galaxy. Uh, I have not seen this, but I'm aware of this, yeah. They release him, but the gem that was sealing it also allows them to command him, so he has to do whatever they say. Uh, the movie is called Psycho Goreman. Yeah. Uh, and it is it is very much like a B-movie kind of throwback where it's like got all these r- silly practical effects. Um, basically, almost Power Rangers in the like dumb costumes. People fighting in dumb costumes is kind of a lot of what happens in this movie. But it is so, so funny. It is, like, incredible. It is It is just incredibly sharp uh, in the way it's written. Uh, just the, the constant jokes about uh, the situation, about this guy, about just, like, having this the buckets of gore with this uh, insane galactic warlord like mutating cops into horrible monsters, but he has to listen to these kids. Um, and also two of the best, I mean, child actors I've ever seen. The little girl especially is so funny. She commits to her character so hard and it, it works really well. Um, but yeah, no, that's just like, if you have any fondness for like goofy, uh, kind of like trauma style uh, a little a little less uh, gross out than a trauma movie but that that gets that gives you the idea of the vibe if you have any fondness for that kind of stuff psycho gorman is really really funny and i it, i absolutely you should watch it it's it's great nice yeah i've heard uh, i've heard good things um dj your thoughts just kidding uh i'll <laughs> go next oh do you have anything else or should i go next oh no that that's that's all i'm I've got. You can go. Where'd ahead. you Where'd you find it? Did you Would you rent it? Or is it on any of the streaming services? The second. Uh, I actually movie? Uh, I met up with a couple of friends of mine for th- that I hadn't seen since before the pandemic, ah. and uh, one of them had it, so we watched it together. Nice. Uh, 
cool. Uh, I'm gonna read a couple things real quick. Uh, I um, read a bunch of comics as usual. Still loving um, the Heroes Reborn thing, where what if the bad guys were? It's it's interesting because I feel like we're getting a sense now for what's the problem with the Squadron Supreme. Why are they bad? And it turns out they're just kind of like the Justice League. Well, you'll, you'll figure it out. Uh, and if anybody wants to read it, because I guess it's not done yet. But we're we're kind of getting not necessarily the sense for like what what's going on but just like why they're worse uh so that's fun i guess a little bit of that has been present from the beginning uh but yeah like enjoying that uh x-men comics are still amazing they just started the new event that's called the hellfire gala which i don't know what that is yet but i just picked it up today very excited um there is a uh i'm watching some movies tv shows stuff like that i think we talked about girls five ever which i loved uh, still love, um, although I don't know how many episodes there are, if it's like you could watch all of them, or if you have Peacock and only the first three if you don't, or if they'll release them weekly, but you can watch them all if you have Peacock. But I'm it might be like that first one where it's like, watch the first three and then pay us, which is bizarre if that's what they're going for with this, but man, that might be it. Um, I was going to say, I watched somebody watch The Mayor of East Town. That seems fun. Uh, mm-hmm. The Philadelphiaisms of it seem entertaining as well. It's not really Philadelphia, but it's like, you know, the delco of it or Philly adjacent. Um, I'm trying to think because I actually – I remember watching quite a few things. Oh, you know what all – you know what all wreck that I enjoyed? Uh, I watched the new Bo Burnham special on Netflix. Have you seen this, Diggins? Oh, I haven't seen it, but I, I am definitely going to watch it soon because I've heard great things. Yeah. What's it called? It's called Inside. Um, okay. Yeah, and uh, it's by Bo Burnham, obviously, and he produced it during quarantine, as I'm sure you can imagine by the title. Uh, and it's uh, it's got some Bo Burnhaminess where it's like really introspective and all that. Uh, but it also just has some pretty funny songs that I could see him doing at any show uh, that work out really well as like just fun earworms. But it's also just really enjoy. So I think it's totally, you know, worth a watch. Um, as most of his stuff tends to be. So that was, uh, yeah, that was this week, which was a lot of fun. Um, and I want to say I watched something on HBO Max, but I cannot for the life of me remember what it was. So I'm just going to open HBO Max. What's that? Oh, no, no, no. This is the anime I mentioned. No, not yet. Not quite yet. I watch, I watch my weekly Bill Maher every week, every (laughs) week on Saturday morning. I go on YouTube Uh. and find the Bill Maher clips. And then force the person that I am with to listen to all of them. And every time he makes a joke, I go like this. Ho, ho, ho. It's so much fun. And uh, that's why they uh, don't talk to you anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, really, when you get down to it, it's cancel culture. You know, it's cancel culture. <laughs> PC gone mad. Uh, yeah, that's it true. is fun. It's very fun to also, watch the Bill Maher Also, vaccines aren't real. I'm pretty sure that's, vaccines aren't real. I mean, listen, the virus came from a lab, right? Why, why wouldn't the vaccines come from a lab? Why would we trust them? You know, labs are bad. It's fun watching Bill Maher bit. I would recommend this to people because, A, he's just, you know, generally kind of an idiot, which is fun. But, B, um, it's fun to watch him start a conversation and then you go, yeah, I know pollution's bad, but how is this cancel culture's fault, Bill? And then he always finds a way. It's always us <laughs> liberals that are messing it up for everybody. It's uh, yeah. So it's, it's one of my favorite. I really do look forward to it more than a lot of other things that I watch on a daily basis. Let me see Disney Plus. Somebody had something that I liked that I was like actually really into. I mean, you know, watched all the Muppet stuff. You know what I watched? I actually I don't know if we talked about it since I finished it. I finished the Muppets show. That is the one that they made for ABC where it pretends to be The Office and 30 Rock, kind of. Oh, There was I, one I actually, season of it, maybe 20 that episodes. Is the, that is the first TV show I ever reviewed on a weekly basis. Oh. Did you watch the whole thing or just like the first couple episodes? I watched the whole thing. I didn't hate it. I, it's fine. It's not yeah, bad. I think the Muppets, there's like a very low, not like low bar, that's not it, but there's like a, a floor of how much I could enjoy it. That's like uh, at medium. And they I've never watched a Muppets thing that's ended up below that. There's somewhere I'm like, this is probably not utilizing the Muppets to the best of their abilities. Like a lot of the first Muppets movie that came out with Jason Siegel. 
um, where I'm like, all right, maybe more Muppets, please. But I'm still like, I like this. And there's stuff that's great. That's really, really great. But yeah, it's hard to hard to ruin the Muppets for me. So um, yeah, I think like for people like me that love them, if you haven't, if you've already watched Muppets Most Wanted in the more recent movie, the one that came before that, but I like Muppets Most Wanted better. Uh, and you've watched Muppets Now, which is their like little short form content show, which I actually thought was great. Uh, and you need more Muppets stuff. And you've already watched Earth to Ned, which I also love, which is kind of Muppetsy. But that's also out of the picture. Then yeah, the the show that's like The Office is is pretty fun, and I'm sure it's just, just called Muppets. <laughs> Absolutely starved for Muppets content. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I watch all the old movies that are also great. If you watch Muppet Cape or Christmas Carol or whatever, then yeah. The funny thing with the Muppets, too, is it's funny to watch how some of them have changed designs and some haven't. Mostly Miss Piggy. Everybody looks exactly the same as they used to, except Miss Piggy. Not that she looks really different, but they do tweak her from, from like, year to year. Give her different haircuts, maybe change a little bit of her eyes um and i mean she looks completely different in the original muppet show but um i think her design is consistent enough that you always recognize it it doesn't look super strange but it just it's it's it's, it's fascinating to me so well uh, nando it's actually that uh this is this is interesting i'm surprised you don't know this uh the original miss piggy actually died and they have been uh, they hired doppelganger <laughs> to replace her Oh, uh, no. After the <laughs> Muppet Show. And, like, that's who, ever since the original Muppet Show, that, that doppelganger has been pretending to be Miss Piggy. How did I not notice it? It should be so obvious. But I guess, you know, if they if everyone acts like it's Miss Piggy, it's kind of like that video where people are passing a ball between them, and then there's a gorilla in the middle, but you don't notice because you're looking at the ball. So, uh that's a that's a thing. You know what else I did? You know, oh, I, I should have talked about this from the start. I played a game called Super Liminal. Have either of you guys played this before? What's it no. called? Super Liminal. I'm still working on it. Mm. Uh, it's been on Reddit forever. I feel like I see the, I've seen this video maybe like 30 times in my life over the every couple of months, and it's like a game, and it's always been like a demo or something, or like a like a oh, wouldn't this be a fun game where you like pick up a you know fucking box or whatever you're in a rel- relatively normal room and you pick up a box and then or like a cube and then you move around and because you are moving the cube and stuff and perspective it looks bigger and smaller and then when you drop it it becomes bigger and smaller based off of how much you saw it and stuff so it's like puzzles where it's like you're in a room with the thing and you have to make a thing bigger by like moving to the right side of the room to make it look bigger and stuff. Um, it's hard to explain, but they, it's like it's pretty cool. And uh, I saw it, saw someone was talking about it today, and I found out it came out in November of last year. And I was like, oh, I've been waiting for this game since I was like in college. I think it was the first time I saw this trailer. So it's kind of interesting. It's got a very, you know what, it del- it it starts off kind of portally in like a fun way uh, where it's like, this is a test to see if your dreams are working or something. But then maybe like an hour in, it gets really like almost horror-y, uh, which is uh, not, I wasn't expecting it, but I do like it. So that's kind of fun. Uh, anybody got anything to plug? Um, we'll be back with Roses and Rejections, because The Bachelorette starts on Monday, so we're doing a preview pod that comes out Friday, and then we'll have our weekly uh, Friday pods covering The Bachelorette. What's the uh, single interesting thing about this season that you already know? Someone, like, get fired or something? Yeah, like, they'll happen last season where it was, like, she quit or whatever. Yeah, I, I, so I never look at spoilers, um, and, like, maybe in one of the promos they'll show, but so far, I think the most interesting thing, that they cast the Bachelorette as the person who came with a sex toy on Matt season, and I'm like, that's all, I'm gonna just remember every episode, like, hey, remember she brought a dildo? Remember? Remember that? Everyone remember that? So I was gonna say, was it just, like, a dildo, Matt's, or was it yeah. something truly wild? That would be amazing, if she just I, dragged by the foot... A big male, like, sex doll. <laughs> just like, like she, like a caveman taking something back to the cave. Just like, this is for you. If you can't get on board with this, then I'll just take him. And I mean, it's pretty like that, graphic. Like, like that I, one I, I, bachelor who had, a, like, a little ventriloquist dummy of himself. Uh, yeah. But instead of a ventriloquist dummy, it's a sex toy. I don't know. I, 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 I think that, you know... 
that's something, you know. It's definitely something. Maybe I'm old fashioned. I mean, well, you know, you're only you're newly married, DJ. You haven't had to spice things up yet, but you know, that's you might true. get there. That's true. I shouldn't judge. Yeah. Um, I mean, listen. It's probably a pretty exciting thing for a bachelor person to do. I think if someone did it on a first date with me, which is essentially what that is, I'd be like, this person's trying a little too hard. Uh, surprise, you go to work. But I guess if it's the bachelor, that's the rule. So that's what you, yeah, you got to do. I'm going to post the image and then you gentlemen tell me. How much did they show the whole thing? They had to black bar it out. They had to, or they chose to, because they're yeah. cowards. I mean, it's network television. I assume that there are actually laws. I don't think this is anything special. Really? Yeah, I feel like there's. I feel like you could have gone with something a lot more graphic oh, if yeah. you even, really wanted even, to make a move. Even just a dildo. There's like way. Yeah, that's way what I'm saying. Worse like, looking dildos than this one. One of the ones that looks specifically like a penis or something that like you would recognize. As like, that isn't just the average one. Do you know that guy? <laughs> be or like, yeah, like one of yours. those <laughs> one of those bad dragon ones that's the size of your arm. Oh my god, oh my god. yeah. Oh my god. I or, uh, there was some, there was one that's shown in a uh, in a um fucking what was it? All gas no breaks video where he goes to like <laughs> a UFO truther convention. That one. That's the one that would really make me go like, oh never mind, this person's insane. We need to lock whoever this is up. But actually, maybe that person's cool. Who who knows? Um, so yeah, so that's coming back next weekish. Yeah, baby. Cool. Uh, Diggins, you got anything to uh, anything to plug? Uh, just the usual. You can see my newsletter, a little perspective at um, a little perspective dot substack dot com, or and I also uh, stream at twitch tv slash this is an odd name. Mostly Disco Elysium, but uh, I'm thinking I might throw in uh, some surprise streams there soon too. Some things that are not Disco Elysium. Let's we'll see. Hey, Can review dildos. Yep, that's it. On a, on a scale of bachelor, not surprising to bachelorette. Now she's got my attention. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> um, that's cool. Uh, I also remembered. Uh, so I actually got something else to recommend. I forgot about this, but I should. I feel like I should say it because I watched it this week. Um, uh, on YouTube, there's a special by a comedian named Emily Heller, who's like one of those mainstays of the podcasts about, you know, pod bros and pod save American stuff. Uh, it's very funny. People should watch that. It's good. It's better than Bill Maher. If you actually want something that's funny, that's funny. Um, but uh, but yeah, as far as plugs, uh, might have a new video coming out soon. Not sure. Uh, I'm going to be on a stream, depending on when we release this, I'm going to be on a stream on Thursday, so maybe in time, um, with uh, Scott, who runs the channel uh, Nerd Sync, although I'm not sure it's called that anymore, but yeah, we're going to be talking about Invincible, uh, because it's exciting, and I've been watching all of the clips where everybody fights everybody again, and that show was very cool. You guys remember that show? I don't. Which show? Wait, did you, not, you never watched Invincible, DJ? Wait, go back. Invincible. Yeah. Yeah, you watched that. Yeah, I watched Invincible. Yeah. Diggins, did you thought, watch Invincible? I, thought I, you have, not. I have oh, okay. not watched Invincible. I we DJ, keep telling you to. DJ I know thinks you have, I said but I'm lazy. Yeah, I mean, it's a very good show, um, but for, you know, a lot of reasons, but it's got what I think is in the neighborhood of American anime kind of fight scenes, uh, that are also sometimes insanely gory. But uh, part of it was I just wanted to like kind of re-see some moments because I was like, I kind of remember it. But, you know, do I remember it properly? Uh, and I do. You know what else I want to recommend kind of plug? This isn't really a plug because I'm not in it. But a friend of mine, um, uh, Patrick Willems, apparently, and by apparently I mean like what he says is, he was in a video by someone named Mr. Beast who was like this humongously popular YouTuber who gives away millions of dollars for fun. And uh, it came out like yesterday, the day before – and it was a game where it was a episode of this guy's channel, Mr. Beast video or whatever, where he's like, I'll make a triangle on the floor of a GameStop. And if you can make the whole GameStop, you can fit all everything in the triangle. You just get to keep it. And that's what he did. And he kept everything because he f put everything in the thing. It's amazing. 
amazing. Uh, it's hard to explain why that's cool, but you should all watch it. That's all I got. Um, yeah. What are we doing next week, guys? Uh, good question. I don't think there's a big release, right? I was talking to Diggins about the this. Plan, yeah, was to do Fast 7. That makes yeah. sense. I think we the have to Furious get on the... Furious 7, fu- excuse me? Because if we do Furious 7 this week, or uh, Fate of the Furious next week, and then I think the week after that will be Fast 9. It's coming. For 9. It's released in other countries. Like, there are people who have already hey, watched yo. this movie. Yo, IGN gave it an 8 out of 10. A little they, something for everyone. Yeah, a little something for everyone. I was going to say, that sounds like the kind of thing they would do. I have not heard such glowing reviews, uh, but also I haven't read any of them. I think. What has IGN ever been wrong? Come on, guys. That's true. Remember that time they had a guy review the game who could, didn't know how to play the game and everybody got mad yeah. at him? Also, <laughs> yeah. did you see d- this week Donkey put out a new video? He, yes. uh, he took back his dream apology because Dream cheated, actually. Dream cheated. <laughs> so, so funny. I, uh. no, I know so little about this stupid Minecraft how you even speed run it, but it seems so. It's it's just so funny that there's so, so much cheating going on in Minecraft, right? <laughs> oh, they're good for them. Uh, this cool. Bill Nye, the science guy, was wrong. Yeah, you know which Bill he should have gotten. Should have gotten Bill uh, Mar because then we would have learned something Bill about Mark. cancel culture in, in the in the streaming community. They're trying to cancel my boy Dream. Uh, <laughs> all right, you guys, this has been great. Cruella. Wow, what a movie. Next week, F- Furious 7. Woo. Just Furious 7. I, want, I keep like getting ready with F7 because the next one is F9. But uh, this one just got a normal name. So we will do Furious 7 next week. Until then, I'm at Nando View Movies on Twitter. I'm at Zippy by Day. I'm at This Is An Odd Name. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Woohoo! Bye. We love you.